Nick, did you cover, uh, <clears throat> did you copy my transmission about uh, SCU is in the pouch? A firm, thanks. And Josh, as you're coming out, you're looking to throw down your anchor hook on the aft D-ring. Josh Cassida now outside of the uh, Quest airlock. He is EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one, wearing the suit uh, bearing the red stripes. Frank Rubio will wear the unmarked suit, both uh, crew members embarking on the second spacewalk of their careers. Lock, black on black, moving over to port on 554 for Frank. Copy, Josh. Gate closed, slider lock for your anchor. You'll just want to check your reels are unlocked at uh, some point. We can get that in the buddy checks. You're looking to put Frank's anchor hook on that port stanchion of 554. Copy that. In work, and both reels are unlocked. Copy. Thanks. V2's anchor hook is gate close, side lock, black on black, port, tether point there on the 554. Copy, Josh. That's a good config. So, Frank, you're go to release your waist tether, uh, and you'll want to check that your reels are unlocked. Okay, copy, N work. And EV2, um, we just saw that your SCU popped out of the uh, pouch. Okay, you'll copy. Unfortunately, it was stuck between my legs, so I had to... Nick, do you want me to go ahead and turn on my HECA? That's your EV-1, sir. Josh, checking. And I'm ready for the Tango bag when you've got it there, Frank. Okay, A-1. And Josh, you've got to go to turn on your HECA. Okay. Understand, HECA only right now for EV-1. A firm. Hi, Josh. I am releasing my waist tether. Stop it. And HECA is on for EV-1. I've got a green light. Copy, Josh. Good green light on your HECA. Hi, right, Josh. And here is the tango bag. All right. Give me one second, and I'll get a red on it. And I'm uh, stationed aft. If there's any way you can persuade it this way. OK, 
Okay, I got my hand on it. Stand by. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, just to recap, the uh, 256th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades underway with the uh, battery power on call from Cassida and Rubio coming at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. The two crew members in the process of moving outside of the Quest airlock. Once outside, they will make their way to the uh, starboard fortress to begin setting up all of their equipment and begin the uh, work to uh, detach the next in the series of ISS rollout solar arrays, or IROSAs, from a uh, support uh, structure on the truss of the station, and then manually move it over to the S4 truss, to which it will be installed on a mounting bracket, bolted into place, electrically connected, and unfurled to begin uh, the augmentation of power for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. This is, uh, again, the third in a series of six currently planned solar arrays, augmented ISS rollout solar arrays, to be installed on the station. Next step will be Frank coming out with the cable bag. One additional task on tap for the two spacewalkers, should time permit, will be the disconnection at the end of today's spacewalk of one of four electrical cables on the neighboring starboard six truss for the 1B power channel that incurred a power trip about a week and a half ago, taking down some of the functionality of that array and placing the 1B power channel out of commission for the moment, those uh, loads being assumed by the 1A power channel for station systems without uh, any interruption to station operations or research. However, to regain about 75% of the functionality of the 1B power channel, the one power connector at the end of today's spacewalk will be disconnected and isolated. It'll be capped off, basically, to uh, isolate uh, the affected area of the solar array for the 1B channel on the starboard 6 truss. Electrical uh, systems officers will then uh, reactivate the 1B power channel. It, uh, in of itself, will receive an ISS rollout solar array next year on the next pair of arrays that will be delivered on a SpaceX uh, resupply mission. If time does not permit the two spacewalkers today to complete all of their work, then an additional spacewalk will be scheduled for this coming Wednesday, December 7th, to finish up either the deployment and activation of the ISS rollout solar array for the 3A power channel or the disconnection of that one electrical cable to bring the 1B power channel back online. Nick, as uh, Frank is getting set up there, I do see his WVF is on, and I do not believe mine is. I don't see the light. Okay, copy that, Josh. You can try to turn it on if you got a free hand. I do. I stand corrected. I got two green lights. Copy. Two green. That's good. Whether or not an additional spacewalk on December 7th is required, and again, we won't know that until we're done with the work today, Cassett and Rubio will venture back outside on December 19th to replicate the work they're doing today, but this time on the other side of the backbone of the station, on the port fortress of the International Space Station, taking yet another ISS rollout solar array from a parking place on the truss of the station and installing it uh, on the 4A power channel original solar array on the P4 truss. Okay, and I'm seeing a slight pull, but I'm not seeing anything when I spin to the right. Uh, with my left foot, interesting. I see no tethers. 
Yep, I see you completely clear. Okay. Be water resistance. <laughs> Frank Rubio at the top of your screen, Josh Cassida on the bottom of your screen, still at the hatchway to the Quest airlock as uh, the two crew members check and double check to make sure they have all their equipment before making their way over to the work site on the starboard Fort Truss. And your right one is down. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right, with that, Nick, we've got everything except for a hap check. So uh, my hap is dry for EV-1. And my half is also dry for EV2. Copy, guys. Good buddy checks. Um, you're go to close the thermal cover. Okay. Get your uh, safety tunnels there. And work, and I'll clear those out. Okay, and I'm um, push. Okay, thanks. The uh, HAP that you heard uh, referred to by spacecraft communicator Nick Haig is the helmet absorption pad, um, making sure periodically throughout the spacewalk that there is no accumulation of uh, condensation in the helmet. Everything looks good. The crew uh, will now uh, begin to translate or make their way over to the work site on the starboard Fort Truss. Otherwise, uh, all looking good on your tethers. I see uh, good checks. Copy that. Hey, guys. Okay, so you're good. Uh, Frank, you're going to lead out, uh, translate to the green hook location. Uh, just remind you to put in a fair lead on handrail 500 and a fair lead at the sea to spur. Okay, I copy that. I got up my local and starting out. Oh, right, Josh, I'll see you up there. Sounds great. And guys, as you're translating now, just want to let you know that was an on-time departure. Well done. Nice. Great job by the uh, IVs. Yep, both on the team down on the ground and the one up here. Absolutely crushed it. Thank you, everybody. All right, I got a fair lead on 500. Wonderful. Can you give me a push on my bag there? Yeah, for I'll sure. This PG. For sure. The T refuses to. Yeah, sometimes the BRT seems like more like a suggestion, doesn't yeah. it? All right, that's good. You okay, thank you. You got it. Can you the Cedar Spur? Copy. Copy, Frank. You're going up the Cedar Spur. Uh, for both of you, just a caution to avoid contact with the Tusk cable. Thanks, Nick. All right, Nick, I'm at the top of the feeder spur. I have a good, uh, good. Copy, Frank. Thanks for that, Frank. Come in. Hey, starboard. Copy. Copy, Frank. You're heading starboard. As you go out there, the handrail you're going to be looking for your green hook is 3215, 3215. Copy. Nader station.
Okay, EV-1 is at the center rail, heading starboard. I'm at the port feeder cart. Okay. And Nick, understand mile marker 6300 is not a bad mark for me, is that right? And we're checking. That's okay. There's 6,300. And 6,300 should be uh, just above those handrails that are down on the uh, Nader side. Agreed. Thank you. And Josh, your green hook, I didn't give you your handrail yet, but you know it's 3247. 3247, great, that's where I am, appreciate it. And making sure I stay. Enough. Franks. Agree with that, Nick. Keep my safety tethers in the Frank. Yep, copy, Josh. And Nick, I am at the uh, end of S1. And can you say again the handrail that I'm looking for? Yeah, it's three two one five thirty two fifteen. G one green hook is down on a zenith end of thirty two forty seven. Nick, I am under the uh, starboard cedar cart, and I see. Three zero six one, three zero six seven. Can you back to me from here? I thought it was and, supposed to be kind of a diagonal Frank, handrail. Yeah, Frank. If you uh, if you look at the the outboard edge of the CETA cart, your handrail is going to be zenith, uh, kind of below mile marker five eight two zero. Copy. EV one's continuing on starboard a little bit. Frank, I will be nowhere near you when I off the US drill. And Nick, uh, I think I am at the end of my safety cutter here. Yeah. Because of the Frank, uh, copy. Fairly. Yeah, Frank, copy. So you're a little too far outboard. So the port Cedar cart is what your target is. You're going to be on the, the starboard side of that port Cedar cart, so you'll have to go back under the MT. Um, when you get to that port Cedar cart, uh, your handrail is going to just be below mile marker 5820. Josh, sorry about that. Jeez, no problem, Frank. So 
know why on dog I could have sworn it was uh, underneath the starboard seat of us. No problem at all. Nick, I am on the meter dancing of three two one seven. And copy Frank, can you say that again? I am on the meter stanchion of three two one seven. Uh green hook is uh dropped on the meter stanchion. Yeah, copy that, Frank. Uh, we, 3215 is a little bit more nadir of that. It's the long handrail below it. Okay, copy. And while, while you guys are working into position, I'm going to read a couple warnings and cautions real quick. So, warning to uh, avoid the grapple shafts and cervic teeth, um, they're no touch, and then caution for no aggressive movements on the FSE, so less than uh, four inches per second translation speed. Wait until any kind of motion dampens out before imparting loads, and you shouldn't impart loads simultaneously, uh, and do not contact the IROSA blankets or solar cell cells, they're fragile. Easy one copies. Easy two copies. EG1 is over at Ancient Delta. And copy, Josh. You're translating toward the FSC tower handrail to stow the bag. 38 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, Cassidy and Rubio making their way towards uh, the ISS rollout solar array that is temporarily parked on a payload attachment device on the truss of the International Space Station. Rubio will be using a pistol grip tool to uh, unbolt the first of uh, a number of bolts that are available uh, holding uh, the IROSA in place. The release of uh, the first of these bolts plus the release of what are called anti-rotation devices that were designed uh, to minimize uh, the loads on the solar arrays in the trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon carrier craft, the resupply vehicle, that delivered uh, this uh, I IROSA and a second IROSA to be installed on December 19th on the Port Fortress solar array of the International Space Station. These anti-rotation devices will be released, all part of the initial work to remove uh, the IROSA from its uh, support structure, its parking place on the truss of the station, prior to the time that Josh Cassida will then manually ride at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm to move the IROSA over to the starboard fortress worksite where it is to be installed on a mounting bracket for its installation and deployment. All right, Nick, so uh, my head that should be on now. Uh, hit the uh, WBS button. Uh, power cycle been twice, and I did not see a green LED. Okay, copy, Frank. Uh, HECA should be on now. We'll check it out, and you power cycle WVS. Uh, power, there's no green light for WVS. I see a green light for HECA. Okay, copy, green light for HECA, and we're seeing WVS. Continue to the proper seat, Peter Carp. Hey, Firm, uh, you're going to stow that cable bag on the uh, square grid alpha uh, using two hooks to secure the bag.
while uh, Cassidy and Rubio are getting uh, situated, uh, making their way towards uh, the IROSA that will be removed from uh, its uh, payload attachment device parking place on the truss of the station. Koichi Wakata and uh, Nicole Mann are at the uh, Destiny Laboratory robotic workstation as they uh, begin to set up shop there. Wakata will be the uh, arm operator driving Josh Cassida uh, with the IROSA to the Starboard 4 worksite for its ultimate installation. Next bag is in a good spot there on the tower. I'm going to get my net uh, off. We've got integral to forward expansion on the tower, and then uh, that, I'm sorry, the adjustable to zero eight, and that would be Zenith. Yeah, we see it, and that's a great config, Josh. Uh, we'll take a glove and half check. Sounds good. Let me put away my VRT, and then we'll do it. Taking a look at my gloves. See no changes, but I'll hold them up to the heck of. And Josh, we don't need the views. Okay. All right, uh, and the half is dry. So with that, I am ready for settings for R5. Okay, copy that, Josh. Good gloves, good half. Your settings for the R5 bolt are going to be Bravo 2, counter clockwise 2. All right, Bravo 2, counter clockwise 2 for R5. That's a good read back. Frank. Where, where are you these days? I am over on the Albert Pseudocode, dropping off the night data. And Frank, once you get that uh, cable bag uh, tied down on the starboard seat of carts, you're going to retrieve crew lock bag M plus that large small ret and stow it on your BRT. Okay, that is our uh, work.
46 minutes into uh, the spacewalk, Rubio and Cassida, soon to begin uh, the first in a series of uh, ongoing bolt turning procedures. First uh, to release uh, the first of a series of bolts called R5 on the lower portion of the ISS rollout solar array that you see uh, at the top of your screen. It is mounted on a uh, attachment structure on the truss of the International Space Station after having been delivered to the station last Sunday on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply flight to the International Outpost. The uh, crew will also release uh, the top portion of uh, what are called anti-rotation devices. These are basically uh, bolts uh, that uh, prevented any uh, inadvertent movement of the IROSAs while they sat uh, in the trunk of Cargo Dragon during its launch from the Kennedy Space Center. Bag Mike with that large swell we're at and you're heading over to the mod kit now. You'll want to check that your gauntlets are in place. Okay. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2 is set, and uh, we had a good catch. Okay, Josh, those are good uh, settings. Uh, so you're going to release R5, expecting 18 to 20 turns. That bolt's going to spring out when released, and there should be a, a white line. I'll be looking for the white line. Thanks for the reminder. 18 to 20 turns. Starting turn. And the crew uh, beginning uh, the procedures and the uh, release of the first of a number of bolts. There are some three dozen bolts in all at a variety of areas along the uh, ISS rollout solar array that must be released. Both uh, on the uh, flight support equipment uh, parking place on the truss of the station, on the IROSA itself, and then ultimately to bolt uh, the IROSA in place on its modification kit or bracket to which it will be affixed on the starboard four truss of the station. Yeah, there's 18 and no white line yet. Well, it is popped out. Is there a chance this white line is fairly subtle and hard to see from uh, from my vantage point? Okay, Josh, copy. You got 18 turns in the popped out. I'm negative. I got I'm a total of 20 now. I get two additional, and I can see. And you can probably see my camera here. It is popped out, and I just a little hard with the sun here to see if there's a white line. Josh. Yeah, sounds good. Do you have good video, Nick? And, and negative. We don't have KU right now. Oh, fine. But, Josh, the, you've got the number of turns, and if it popped out, we're good to press. Okay. I think the right line is pretty subtle. I see it at the base, I believe. It's slightly different than the, uh, the shaft of the, uh, of the bolt. Copy, Josh. We're go to press. Everybody's happy. Copy. All right, Nick, I am at the pocket, and I have the large, small reds to the left. Uh, the left mid strut handrail, and then I have the interval to the left lower strut lower stanchion handrail. So, handrail uh, lower stanchion. Yeah, copy that, uh, Frank, and we'll take a glove, tap, and gauntlet check. Copy that. Uh, 
And guys, while I've got a second, I'm going to give you some cautions for the mod kit. No sudden movements on the mass canister or mod kit, less than four inches a second on the BGA uh, to translate slow. Avoid cyclic loading and uh, be mindful that the IEA uh, battery AP cables are a snag hazard. Okay, copy that. Thanks. Give you two copies. I understand I'm uh, going back to the seat of cart. Is that correct? That's a firm, Josh. Uh, when you're ready, you're going to move to the port seat of cart with three. Port seat of cart with three. Take while I'm out here. The um, rocket looks good. We have uh, three soft captures in the right position and uh, no fraud on the platform. That's awesome. Thanks. Appreciate the, the check. Um, next uh, step is going to be translating back to the FSC. Okay. Good work. Flying from southwest to northeast across the Pacific, soon to cross uh, the west coast of South America. The International Space Station flies smoothly on 53 minutes into today's spacewalk by Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, running about 15 minutes ahead of the timeline so far, having begun the spacewalk at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. All right, Frank, I'm at the Fort Cena cart. I can imagine a little bit of a traffic jam here. Right. see you. Um, are you about to head back in Tencent? I'm getting an APFR in them, well. Okay. Nick, I'm uh, currently showing top up top all. And looks like it must be Fox 6 already, so it's just the clock in the off of change. Yeah, your current uh, setting, pop up pop Fox Trot 6, is what you're going to install. Uh, when you do the install, it's clocking 12. Uh, if I had Zenith here, my uh, safety tether will go up and up. You guys want me to wait here, or is that okay? Copy work. Hey, Frank, uh, understand, and we've got a good view of uh, kind of the bottleneck that we've got going on. Big picture for you guys, uh, we're over seven hours on consumables. We're up 15 minutes on the timeline. You guys are going great. So, Frank, if you just want to hold position while while Josh works this, and, and then we'll let you pass through. Okay, sounds great. While you're hanging out there, uh, if you want to give us a glove and half check, that'd be great. Apologies, Josh. How old do you want to 
All right, so. Get my uh, gloves. Have a couple of tiny uh, nicks on the rubber part, but absolutely uh, superficial. Otherwise, baseline and uh, dry hat. Good rep to the APSR and put on my VRT. And copy, Frank. Uh, understand. Good glove and hat. White on black and removing. CFR is uninstalled. You're there, you can probably see, I'm going to try to stick this out the side, it's probably the best way to translate, if you agree. It's going to clear stuff. Yep. Uh, it's going to hit the uh, brake lever, but I think it'll stay, no, it'll, it'll bump into the brake lever, basically. Got it. Thank you. Uh, need a little bit more inboard just to keep it from catching. There you go. You're good. Okay, continue inboard as much as you can. And click you are clear of the brake handle. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. That was super helpful. All right. That is your departure point for uh, any of the FSC, so I'm out of your way now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And, Josh, as you uh, head inboard toward FHRC, you're looking for mile marker 6300, 6300. That one's my favorite. Thanks, Nick. And Frank, you're going to translate up to the uh, tower handrail. Uh, you're going to go stanchions, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie to the tower. Okay, I copy. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking for a robotic arm around here. That's the one. All right, Frank, you need comp. Negative, thank you. M1, M2, on six round one. Hello, EV1. We have a GCA to published APFR install position on your go. Okay, EV1 is ready GCA to the APSR install position. With the uh, first of the uh, numerous bolts having been released by uh, the crew at the one hour mark into today's spacewalk, bolts uh, holding the IROSA or the ISS rollout solar array in place on uh, the attachment device on the truss of the International Space Station. Josh Cassida will soon uh, retrieve an articulating portable foot restraint that he will attach uh, to the end of the station's robotic arm that will be operated by Koichi Wakata from the robotic workstation with the assistance of Nicole Mann in the Destiny Laboratory of the complex. Cassida will uh, plant his feet in uh, that articulating portable foot restraint. He will ultimately 
carry the IROSA over to the uh, Starboard 4 worksite like a telephone repairman at the end of a cherry picker. And he and Rubio will then begin uh, the work to install the IROSA, bolt it into place, and prepare it uh, for its ultimate uh, unfurling. Okay, we are at the published position. Understood. Stand by. Okay. I think that's going to work. Let's call it QCA complete, and I'll let you know if I need anything else. Copy. QCA complete. Brakes are on. Go for APFR install. Understand. Go for APFR install. And I am going to put my anchor over on the SS RMS handrail, and that's a local dismount. I'll do the uh, tether swap later. And Frank, you're going to retrieve that PGT from Crew Lock Bag Tango and uh, put that on your swing arm and head over to Stanchion Bravo. Affirmative inward. And Nick, did you copy? Uh, I'm just going to local to the arm itself for the install. While Cassidy is uh, in the process of uh, retrieving and installing the articulating portable foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm, Frank Rubio will begin to release the anti-rotation devices, again, these are devices that uh, prevented any inadvertent motion by the delicate uh, ISS rollout solar arrays while they were in the trunk of the Cargo Dragon, the SpaceX Cargo Dragon that delivered the arrays to the International Space Station, preventing any inadvertent loads to be placed on the IROSAs during their transit during launch and ascent. If you want to check it before you stick it in. Copy that. Thank you. I think I have a PGT on the route to uh, Romeo 5. Josh, you got me? I do have a... Josh, I've got uh, both you and Frank. Okay, sounds good. Okay. And Nick, did you copy my last? I have a PGT. I'm in route to Romeo 5. Yep, copy, and I see you in motion. Okay, 
Just be advised, uh, we didn't copy your response. Okay, copy that. M2, EB1, you hearing us okay? Hey, for him, we're hearing him loud and clear. I also had one this one uh, with you as well, just a heads up. Might have uh, more of that red, ratty cough. Yep. On the right side of your screen, wearing the suit bearing the red stripe, Josh Cassida with the uh, articulating portable foot restraint that he will attach uh, to the end of the station's robotic arm that soon will be operated by Koichi Wakata with the assistance of Nicole Mann from the robotic workstation inside the Destiny Lab. A good view uh, in the middle of your screen of the uh, ISS rollout solar array that will be released from its attachment point, its temporary parking place on the station, and then maneuvered into place to be installed on a mounting bracket, a mod kit, if you will, that was installed on the station during a spacewalk last March. Copy, Frank. It's Bravo 2, Counter 2. Copy, Bravo 2, Counter 2. That's a good read back. You're going to expect 18 to 20 turns. The bolt's going to pop out when fully released, and there should be a white line. Okay, copy that. This is uh, the procedure for Rubio to release the R5 bolt, the first in the series of bolts holding uh, the IROSA rollout solar array in place on its uh, temporary parking spot on the truss of the station. Okay, black on black, good pull and twist test. And I'm going to grab my rep. Yeah, copy that, Josh. And can you check the pitch knob? Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's better than the last one. It can be pressed. Looks great. We see it. EV1, and we have a GCA to publish the APFR ingress position when you're ready. Copy that. In the uh, maybe five minutes or so, we'll do a tether swap here. Yep, copy that, Josh. That tether swap's the next thing. Copy. All right, once I'm ready for that, Nick, I was going to drop the uh, left anchor hook, my left uh, fifty tether first, and then uh, work on the red. Are you okay with that? Yeah, we'd like you to work the arm side first. And Josh, I think you were just talking about your local. Uh, no, I'm actually talking uh, next step here. Uh, I'll put my left face each other anchor on the FSR must handrail. Um, good point. Those are good words. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. I think I have 20 turns on Romeo 5, and I see white line. Copy 20 turns and a white line. So you're good to translate to Charlie 2. Copy Charlie 2. OK. 
Okay, last safety tether is connected to the SSRMS tether point. Uh, in fact, I'm going to move it to the other one. Stand by. Last safety cover anchor is on the SSRMS uh, business end, uh, handrail other point, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That 85 foot is unlocked, and the red and white uh, crew hook is on my left e ring center, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. Copy, Josh. That is a good configuration. Understand next steps are lock the red reel and put the red hook on the seat reel. Is that correct? Hey, firm. You'll just uh, want to keep an eye out for Frank's tether. It is nader of me, so I'm going to call that good, but thank you for the reminder. All right, red hook is coming off the right side. It is at 6300, and red reel is unlocked. Copy that, Josh. That's a good tether swap. All right. I'm going to grab my locals off of the arm, and then uh, you agree, Matt. I, think I see us getting into an, uh, the GCA. Hey, firm, Josh, that's the next step is uh, uh, GCA for the ingress position. And uh, Frank, when, when you're uh, in position for Charlie 2, you're going to attach the adjustable equipment tether from your small trash bag to the ARD tether point. Okay, that's complete. I'm ready for settings for ARD Charlie 2. Bravo 3, counter 2. Bravo 3, counter 2. That's a good read back, and you'll release uh, six to ten turns. Okay, copy that, and after I get this one out, I'll drive it back, and then I'll go to ARD-1. Uh, I'm good. EV-2 is good on comms. Okay. Stand by. I'm going to bring that ingress aid in a little bit to give you a little bit of clearance when you come station later. Appreciate it. Frank, I'm going to take it for a GCA. You're good. I'm uh, good on comm. Thank you. All right. EV-1 is ready, GCA, and as a heads up, uh, M1 looks like about six inches from the front of the APFR to uh, the structure. I'll keep it clear. Copy. That's what we expect. Rubio now in the process of uh, releasing these anti-rotation devices. The bolts uh, that basically uh, secured the ISS rollout solar array in place in the trunk of the uh, SpaceX cargo dragon that carried uh, this and another ISS rollout solar array to the International Space Station arriving last Sunday. These uh, ARDs are anti-rotation devices designed uh, to prevent any inadvertent loads being placed on these delicate arrays until they arrived at the station for their uh, installation. In this case today, with the first of these two solar arrays on the uh, starboard four truss of the station for the 3A power channel. Good clear. Wrapping out motion. Okay, that's our published position. Okay, GCA complete.
Copy. GCA complete. Brakes on. Go for APSR ingress. Copy. Go for APSR ingress. And Frank, uh, just want to point out the uh, the white string that's uh, across the top of that ARD, that large loop. It's in, it's there to help if you need it to to pull straight out from the ARD if you've got that block rotated out of the way. Uh, the block kind of keeps floating um, back into where it's blocking it. Unfortunately, I put nine turns in, so it should have plenty of room. Yeah, if the, if the block rotates, then that's good. As long as we can keep it out of the way, then the arch should just pull straight off the bolt. Okay, it's off. Well done. Okay, I'm ready for starting for driving it back. Yep, uh, to drive that back, it's going to be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, copy. Yep, and you're going to drive that to torque and uh, give us the uh, turns and light. One hour, 18 minutes into uh, the spacewalk, uh, you're looking over the shoulder of Frank Rubio as he uh, continues work uh, to drive bolts that have held uh, the ISS rollout solar array in place on an attachment point on the truss of the International Space Station. There are a number of bolts for a variety of different mechanisms that must be uh, loosened and uh, backed out of their uh, installed position in order to uh, enable Josh Cassida to move the array to the work site of the starboard four truss for its installation. You want me to drive it back out and reset it or leave it as is? Checking. And at the current setting I had, uh, or at the current position I had 11.8 torque, four turns, green light. Yeah, copy 11.8 on the uh, torque. Uh, didn't copy the turns, but you got a good green light. Uh, four turns. Copy four turns. Checking. And Nick, understand where it go for the back off? That's a firm, Josh. Your go. Okay, we're set up here, EV-1. This is going to be body out and body down. We're coming out about a meter and down three and a half meters. Out one and down three meters. EV-1 copies. Thanks. You have a go. Starting motion. Nicole Mann uh, orchestrating uh, the movement of Josh Cassidy now, who is uh, affixed at the end of the uh, station's robotic arm to position him for his next work. And Frank, we're happy you can press to the other ARD. Okay, copy. Okay, there's your X, and now we're coming to station data. V1 copy.
good view of Josh Cassida at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm in a uh, foot restraint, positioning him at the right uh, orientation. He will be uh, rotating a couple of uh, rollers called boom deployment system rollers, 90 degrees to a deployed position. Part of the work uh, in tandem with Frank Rubio to release uh, the ISS rollout solar array from its parked position on the truss of the station. Okay, EV-1, we are at the published back off position. We are setting up for a two and a half minute bolt access at joint OCAS. EV-1, copy. And a panoramic view from 260 miles above the Earth as uh, the International Space Station passes off the northwest coast of Spain. Stand by. Good, I'm ready. Starting motion. Okay, okay maneuver complete. Sign up for the joint OCAS. Okay, copy that. Set it. It's briefly you look like a uh, body right motion on that last one, just a heads up. Might have been just me swaying here. Frank, how are those ARDs working for you? Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, a little more challenging than I expected. But... EV-1, we are ready for the joint OCAS. This is going to pitch you back 90 degrees and bring you underneath IROSA. EV-1 copies. Here we go. Three, two, one, starting motion. I see good motion, a little body left, and towards my back. All right, Nick, I am at ARD-1. I am ready to it, and I'm ready for settings. Copy. We see the same, Frank. Uh, Bravo 3, counter 2. Bravo 3, counter 2. Copy. That's a good read back. Again, six to ten turns until you can rotate that uh, stop block. Copy, thank you. We uh, will be regaining our downlink video from the station momentarily, handing over communications between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. Got it. It's probably too early to tell how much of the uh, maneuvering out to S4 will be at night. Is that right? Motion's ramping out. Understand motion is stopped.
Yeah, just uh, we, we checked the timeline, and you should be in a night pass when you're maneuvering out. All right, Nick, unfortunately, the, uh, I've got uh, 10 turns in there, plenty of clearance between the block and the ARD, but the ran here snapped while I was trying to pull it out. Copy, Frank. CB1, we're setting up for GCA, GCA to publish R1, R2 bolt access. Okay, sounds like they might beat the comm. Nick, I'll let you decide on if you want us to GCA here or stand by. I just got it off. <laughs> you need any more comm, Frank? Uh, I'll just verify settings for putting it back in, please. Yep, Frank, it's going to be Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and then we're going to need the uh, the torque and turns. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, copy, thank you. Before we do the GCA for me on R1, R2, is it Alpha 2, counterclockwise 2? Just to get that set up as we move. It's Alpha 4, counter 2. Alpha 4, counter 2, I'll get it set up. D1 is ready, uh, GCA to publish for R1, R2 access. Okay, we are ready. This will bring you body in about a meter and a half. Copy, body in a meter and a half. Starting motion. Approaching the 90-minute uh, mark in the uh, spacewalk, Frank Rubio continuing to back out bolts to release uh, anti-rotation devices. Basically, uh, these are devices holding the ISS rollout solar array in a stable position. That's what they were used for during the launch and ascent of the arrays in the trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon. Josh Cassidy at the end of the uh, station's robotic arm being carefully maneuvered by Koichi Wakata under the watchful eye of Nicole Mann, who's working with Wakata at the robotic workstation in the Destiny Laboratory as he begins work to uh, unbolt uh, two bolts for the deployment uh, boom deployment system. These are restraint bolts. The boom deployment system uh, to be employed later uh, as the uh, ISS rollout solar array is unfurled to its full length of 60 feet once it is installed and electrically connected to the uh, 3A power channel on the starboard four truss of the station. You want copy? Stand by. This published position is going to work fine. It's GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete, go for unbolting. Go for unbolting R1, R2. Nick, I've got Alpha 4, counterclockwise 2, set for R1. That, that's a good uh, good setting. 10 to 13 turns and the bolt's going to spring out when fully released. Uh, just a caution when you rotate those booms to do it slowly, 90 degrees in 10 seconds. Copy that. 10 to 13 turns, starting now. Good view, looking right down the barrel of the ISS rollout solar array. These are uh, boom deployment restraint bolts that Cassida is backing out so that uh, there are two rollers that will be rotated 90 degrees to assist in the freeing up of the ISS rollout solar array from its parked position. Okay, copy that. And verify I am doing a... Um... Yeah, Frank, you're going to do the socket swap, so you're going to grab that socket caddy. 10 turns for R1. Copy inward. And there's I'll that do the thing. same on R2 and then swing them out. That was 10 turns. It's popped out. Copy, Josh. 10 turns and it popped out. And Frank, the, uh, the socket caddy, there's that red on the external that you can use to stow that socket caddy on the outside. Yeah, I appreciate that. It looks like it's fine here. Just want to confirm counterclockwise R2. Counterclockwise 
counterclockwise for R2, alpha four, counter two. You got it, counter same direction, here it comes. Ten turns, R2 is popped out. Copy, Josh. We see ten turns and we see a good bolt release. And so, Josh, once you uh, stow your PGT, uh, you'll rotate those booms down slowly. Sounds good. I'll do it. Thank you. You are looking good over there. Pretty, uh, pretty sweet view of the moon up here. Make that space look good. I know I saw that. That's an incredible view. Hey, uh... I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but at some point in this whole process, if you're able to get as comfortable with this APFR ingress as I am, you can see that I'm all the way in. That would feel really good. Okay. All right, 10 seconds for 90 degrees on R1. Copy, Josh. All right, Nick, I have the 12-inch 5.8 on my PGT, good pull test, and I have the 7-16th 12-inch on the Caddy, good pull test. Copy, good socket swap. Thanks, Frank. Verify, I'm heading over to Charlie 1. A firm, Charlie 1, next to Stanchion, Charlie. Uh, I'm going to head over to Delta real quick and give Josh the uh, system uh, APFR. Josh, I see your right foot. I think the official, good... official term is warm fuzzy. Yeah. I think that's what you're looking for. Uh, you got a warm fuzzy on your right. Okay. Uh, your left, if you take your heel just a little more outside, can you turn it anymore? No? Okay, then you're in a good position. I can only see the inside, and it's on the edge. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. I think it's just uh, large. Field. Sounds good. You know what? You also have a great view in that you're over at uh, C2. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got R1, R2, arms at least, all the way swung out. Copy. Good rotation on both those booms. Okay, for R3, R4, I know one of them is the other direction. Yep, copy R3 and R4 is going to be uh, the next step, and uh, you need to assess your position, see if you need any GCA to be able to reach those. You know what? Uh, M1, do you mind if we took a minute and just move the uh, body down? It'll just help since I've got about uh, three, what, 500 of these to do or so. One hour, 35 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Josh Cassida has released uh, the first in a series of bolts for the boom deployment system on the ISS rollout solar array. The first two bolts to be uh, released were restraint bolts. He also manually repositioned uh, two rollers to get them out of the way, setting the stage for the release of another pair of bolts for the outer deployment to restraints all part of uh, the mechanisms holding uh, the array in its folded position prior to the time that it is manually transported by Cassida over to the uh, starboard four truss for the electrical uh, hookup and installation uh, alongside the legacy or original array that powers the 3A power channel of the International Space Station. Okay, we copy.
Abby, we're going to bring you a body down 20 centimeters, and with the night pass, clearances are tough, so we'll uh, take your clearances from the boot plate and your body. Sounds good. I've got uh, clear space between me and Irosa. I can maintain the clearance. Copy, starting motion, body down. Copy. I see good motion. Continue. To go. And ramp out motion there. Got motion? Okay, there is your 20 centimeters. What? I guessed it right? Nailed it. <laughs> okay. All right, Beck, I'm at R3 and ready for settings. Josh, the uh, setting. GCA complete, sorry. Copy, GCA complete. Okay, Josh, your settings are alpha 3, clockwise 3. All right, this is the weird one. Alpha 3 is set. Clockwise 3 is set. That's a good that's a good I setting. I'm off turn on Charlie 1. And off Charlie 2. And you are 245 ish. Is that right? That's affirmative. Uh, so uh, you might want to reset your, your PGT counter to help out. You're on R3. You've got good settings. Good luck. <laughs> Starting turns clockwise. Not only did you nail that GCA, yeah. but it was a metric. Well done. Hey Frank, uh, you, we've got some choppy com. You were you were cut out on your last. It's okay. It was for Josh. Hey, Frank, when you get into a stable position before you work on Charlie 2, um, we want you to try to readjust your cuff checklist so that it doesn't push your gauntlet down. Yeah, so we can see in the WVS, you want to get that band back up as high as you can on your arm. We want the gauntlet to be able to cover that wrist ring. And we've got a handover. And Frank, Josh, we're back with you after the handover. Hey, Nick, I adjusted it as best I could. Unfortunately, it's not completely covered. Um, with a glove hand, I, I can't really move that elastic loop. Every time I move one end, the other end goes back to the starting point. Yeah, understand. Don't know if there's a way to, to wiggle that uh, cuff checklist band up towards your elbow as much as you can. Um, as long as it's still accessible for you, it, it doesn't need to be down toward the uh, toward the wrist ring. Yeah, unfortunately, that's what I'm having trouble doing. I, I just can't push it up. And it won't it won't expand enough to.
copy, Frank. Uh, so we're going to have you continue to work on the, the Charlie 2. Um, there's going to be a time in the timeline where Josh is going to be close to you. He might be able to lend a hand to, to fix that. Ready for starting for Charlie 2. Charlie 2 is Bravo 3, counter 2. Yeah, I have Bravo 3, counter 2, and I understand 27 turns. That's affirmative, 27 turns. Two hundred and forty five <laughs> on Romeo three. You win. <laughs> and and R four counterclockwise. That's affirmative, and we've got the copy of your two hundred forty five turns on R three. R four is Alpha three counter three. Alpha three. Counter three is set, and I'm sorry, from this spot, I cannot see the turkey timer. Uh, not That's on either side. No worries. We'll have uh, Frank confirm in a little bit. Sounds good. Cassida and Rubio continue work uh, to uh, undo a number of bolts holding the ISS rollout solar array in place on the uh, flight support equipment on the truss of the station. Prior to its uh, movement by Cassida over to the starboard four truss for its installation and electrical connection to the original solar array system, the electrical system, the integrated uh, electronics assembly on the uh, starboard four truss for the 3A power channel. Rubio in the process of releasing um, a couple of outer deployment restraint bolts on the uh, ISS rollout solar array. The crew continues to operate several minutes ahead of the timeline. Hey, Frank, um, before you head back over to the uh, crew lock bag, uh, we'd, we'd like you to translate over to Stanchion Alpha to see if you can put eyes on the turkey timers at the bottom of those root beams. Okay, no problem. The uh, turkey timers referenced by uh, spacecraft communicator Nick Haig are basically status indicators to ensure that the bolts that are being uh, released are fully released. Just a, a, a status uh, double checking device to ensure that the ISS uh, rollout solar array is ready to be released and removed from its flight support equipment. Yeah, copy Frank, uh, you see it good. We, uh, we don't have it on the video, it's a little bit higher up. You'd have to translate higher up on the stanchion. And uh, we don't need the video, um, but if you wanna wait until Josh drives the R4 bolt all the way out, we'd appreciate it. And just to verify that the bearing hole being uh, past the bottom, is that full deployment? If, if it breaks the surface, if you see it sticking out at all, it's good. Okay. Yep, it's uh, sticking out a good uh, between a, a quarter and half an inch. Thanks for the data. I'm going to translate to the other side. I should be able to see it from the bag. Okay, sounds like a plan.
and I see it for shooting from uh, this side also, uh, same distance, one quarter to half an inch, uh, good, bearing uh, hole visible. That is 245 turns on this side. You can let Miranda know that when I wake up during the night with a recurring dream of counting to 245, I'm giving her a call. Yeah, copy all, Josh. And uh, copy, Frank, you saw a good turkey timer. Uh, you're going to want to retrieve the square scoop out of crew lock back T. I knew that. Want to make sure you were paying attention. Wasn't going to let you go too far. Okay. <laughs> Nick, I am complete here at R4. Is it Robo next for us? Yeah, so next step we. Confirm, I have a maneuver to the carrier back off position when you're ready. And guys, we want to stand by and hold position right here. We, we want to try to troubleshoot uh, uh, the gauntlet or the cuff checklist and his gauntlet on the left hand of, uh, of Frank. Um, you guys are in a close position here. And so once Frank gets a scoop, if he can translate over and extend his arm towards a Josh, what, we're, what we need to accomplish is clear the, guff, the cuff checklist band off high enough up so that the gauntlet can cover the wrist ring. Actually, I think that's going to be hard from this position. I don't know where a safe spot is for you to be, Frank. Yeah, I'm going to have to just reach out my arm to you and see if you can get it. But well, we got to stay clear of the uh, the solar array. Right. Yep. Yeah. Can you reach? No, I don't think so. I would have the GCA if that's what you want. Nick? Stand by. We're, we're talking about it just a second. Yeah, Josh, um, we're good with you GCAing so that you guys can close the gap between you to look at that. And we want to make sure, Josh, that you don't have the same issue. Uh, we want to make sure that we can keep the gauntlets over the wrist rings. That's, that's the priority. We will take care of it. We'll, uh, we'll get each other set up here. Uh, Duke, if you are ready, I'm going to need a GCA to my right and end up being about a meter. Uh, maybe I can pull it up short of that. One hour, 50 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. The crew running about 15, 20 minutes ahead of the uh, timeline, doing very well as they are uh, backing out a number of bolts, holding uh, the ISS rollout solar array in place on flight support equipment on the truss of the station. Frank uh, Rubio will soon be breaking torque on a number of additional bolts holding IROSA in place. This. Uh, Rollout solar array will be transported uh, to the starboard four truss to uh, the integrated electronics assembly to be installed on a mounting bracket and electrically connected to join forces with the uh, original solar array for the 3A power channel on the starboard four truss. Continue. Copy. You have 50 centimeters to go. Okay, continue. And ramp out in three, two, one, stop motion. Okay, motion stops. Like a Michelangelo painting. <laughs> Cassida now uh, helping uh, to adjust the cuff checklist on the left arm of Frank Rubio. Let me hold on to your main workstation. Can I work with both hands? Great. Spin it around here and then pull. 
see how I'm doing? Yep. Yeah, you're doing, yep. You can um, grab both ends and kind of pull out. I'll try. Yeah. Oh, man. Hold on. The International Space Station flying directly over Singapore at an altitude of 260 statute miles, moving from northwest to southeast. Um, the part near your left hand, have the strap there. Sure. Yep. Uh, right by your thumb. Down a little bit. There we go. That was the part that was caught. Yep. I think we got Perfect. All right. You are good. And let's try to get that pulled as far back as we can. Yeah, hold on there. Hold on to that mini workstation. All right, let me know when you're holding. Ready? Okay. Oh, GCA complete. Sorry, Duke. <laughs> GCA complete. <laughs> okay. You probably have good view of that in my track at least. Yeah. Hey, Josh, we see it in your uh, uh, camera. Josh, it looks good. All right, now, can you do something similar to me? Yep. Let's see. The unlock, I'll hold you right here. Got it? Okay. Yep. And you are clear of that solar ray, I'll keep you clear. Just watch your right hand on that panel and I'll try to keep you stable. So after a minor wardrobe adjustment for Frank Rubio, the two uh, spacewalkers continue on in this 256th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. Okay, but if I pull this side, can you do that side? Uh, that's a problem, I... We'll just need to be... I don't, if I can... I don't think there's a way we can affect their locks, but let's be careful. Yep. yep. It's not. It's the bottom part here. I'm going to spin it. So, you see down here, I'm going to turn my hand this way. Great. Yeah, almost there. And guys, we see you working with it. Just uh, watch any of the sharps that are on the cuff checklist. The coil binding can snag on things. All right, Nick, yeah. how much more time do you want to devote to this? Is this worth it? Okay. It's also a ton of energy. It's just unfortunate this strap is, like, maxed out. Yep, copy, guys. Uh, appreciate the effort on that. Um, it looks like the gauntlet's able to cover it up, so we're good to press. I agree. Yep, and I'll be sure because I can pull mine back. So I think we're in good fit. Appreciate the attention there. All right. Uh, I'll leave it to Nick and M1 to figure out uh, where we go from here on Robo. So I have a maneuver to the carrier back off position that's going to bring your body out about a meter and a half, and then we'll, we can take out the uh, Y during that flight. I'm good for that, and that is not a GCA, so uh, you have to calm if you need it, Rick. Okay, copy. Thank you. Okay, we're bringing your body out. Copy. Starting motion. I'm heading over to Charlie 1 to release and put on the scoop. Yep, those are good words, Frank. Uh, sinking back up. We've got Charlie 1, the full release to do over there, and then we'll get you in position for Charlie 2 to do the final release. Okay, copy that. I see good motion. Frank Rubio uh, will be pressing ahead here to uh, release the final pair of bolts holding uh, the IROSA on the flight support equipment on the truss of the International Space Station. We are approaching the two-hour mark in today's spacewalk. The 
Two crew members outside, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, began their spacewalk at 6.16 a.m. Central Time. They're running about 15 to 20 minutes ahead in the timeline. Back off position. We are setting up for a three-minute retrieval intermediate joint OCAS. Easy one, let's go. I think I'm set up for Charlie 1. Okay, Frank, your settings are going to be Bravo 3, counter 3. Bravo 3, counterclockwise 3. Yep, 51 to 54 turns, and the bolt should spring out when released. 51 to 54. Bart. EV-1, we're ready for the joint OCAS. This is going to pitch you forward 90 degrees and bring you in front of IROSA. Run copies and ready. Three, two, one, starting motion. See good motion. Nick, how are you feeling about the timeline for uh, removal from the FSC? Hey, Josh, you read, uh, read our minds. We were talking about down here. We're on timeline. Consumables are looking great. Looks like we're going to be go for release. That's awesome news. You guys have put together such an incredible plan. I thought it might be something in the cuff checklist that would give us trouble, not the cuff checklist itself. At the two-hour mark in uh, today's spacewalk, flight controllers here, very comfortable with where the two spacewalkers are in the release of all the bolts and have given uh, the crew a go to release uh, the IROSA from its flight support equipment. Okay, that's the completion of that joint OCAS. We are setting up for another three-minute retrieval lineup joint OCAS. If you want, ready. Okay, EV-1, we are set up. This is going to pitch you forward and bring you up over IROSA. Copy. Three, two, one, starting motion. Take good motion. Uh, hey, Nick. What's your about Charlie-1? 
Frank, we're with you. So I've got 54 turns. Um, the, the bolt is really loose, but I guess when you say it pops out, I physically be able to push it back in? And Frank, that's affirmative. You should be able to push it back in. So if you want to add more turns, you can go beyond 54. Okay. Uh, the uh, super wobbly side to side, but I, I don't seem to be able to push it back in any amount. And Frank, we're happy with that bolt. It looks like it's released. And Frank, after you stow that PGT, you're going to install the square scoop on uh, the micro square near Charlie One. Okay, that's the end of the joint OCAS. We uh, have a GCA to publish. I wrote the retrieval on your go. Okay, I copy that. Uh, did you expect me to be yawed right, body right a little bit? I'm not quite lined up. Checking. I think when you have a second, I'll probably have you give a look at the file, make sure that nothing changed there. Sure, we'll do. And EV1, your yaw is uh, zero and should remain uh, that as you come into IROSA. When we bring you in, it's just body in. Everything else should be set up. All right, Nick, I have that scoop on Charlie 1. It is in locked position, 45 degree uh, angle towards the bottom of IROSA. Copy, Frank. Uh, can we get a quick glove and hap check? All right. Uh, can I steal the call after your hap check? Yes, and I have uh, good gloves, good hat. You do too. Copy, good gloves, good hat. Frank, I'm going to steal the call. The GC had published. If you could give a look at uh, maybe why I've yawed just slightly to the right. And uh, M1 EV1 is ready for a GCA to publish for uh, the retrieval position. Copy, standby. Josh, it does look like your footplate um, is yawed slightly towards your. Copy. And it's the plate, it's not actually. Oh, correct, sir. you're right. That was just me. Okay. That looks better. The plate looks good. Yeah. 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 All right, dude, ready, GCA, no need for ya.
Okay, I'm going to retrieve the other scoop for Charlie 2. Affirmative, and you're going to get the square scoop with the long duration tie down tether on it. Copy. Okay, we're ready for the GCA to publish. This is going to bring you body in 80 centimeters, and we still have challenging views with the cameras, so if you can help us out. Copy, and I'll keep you clear. Starting motion. I see good motion. Twenty centimeters. Okay. Ramping out. Okay. I'm going to need fifteen centimeters body in, and the sun is coming out, and I have clearance myself. Copy. Fifteen centimeters body in. Uh, starting motion. I see good motion. Ramping out. Two hours, nine minutes into uh, the spacewalk at the top of your screen, Josh Cassida, his feet planted at the end of uh, the Canadarm2 robotic arm, ready to uh, remove the ISS rollout solar array from its flight support equipment. After Frank Rubio drives two final bolts that uh, are holding uh, the array in its place. Cassida then will bring uh, the array over to the Starboard 4 truss worksite to begin work uh, with Rubio to install it at uh, the appropriate position adjacent to the original solar array on the Starboard 4 truss uh, that governs uh, the electrical output for the 3A power channel. Okay, that's your f additional five centimeters body in. Didn't really see it, Duke. Um, five more centimeters body in, and that'll be it. Copy coming five centimeters body in, starting motion. Okay, that's an additional five centimeters body in. Ah, I didn't call it because I didn't see it. Um, we will call that good. Uh, GCA complete. Reaching your smooth operator. Okay, that's GCA complete. You have go for IROSA retrieval. You want copies? I've got a uh, ret on the scoop here on the right. It is uh, from my. Any workstation on the right side. Copy that, and we uh, we see that. So I've got a lot of uh, checks that we can uh, we can start rolling through. Okay. The first time my hands have gotten a little chilly. I've never uh, used the glove heaters before. Um, if you've got any advice on it? I'll take it, but I might have to turn them on for this uh, next uh, maneuver. In fact, they are on now, and I'll let you know if I need to turn them off before we go. Copy that. And uh, just for your essay, you should be in uh, in the sun for most of that uh, relocate. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, they weren't cold uh, earlier. Frank, you can have the comm if you need it. Okay, I am uh, positioned at Charlie 2. Yep, and uh, Frank, we're going to hold right here because we're going to go run through all these buddy checks because as soon as we release that, it's uh, it's going to be free from the FSC. And uh, just uh, we've got a great view on your HECA. Um, just lots of delicate stuff below where you're trying to drive that, so just a heads up. Yep, copy. Okay, so let's do uh, glove and HAP checks. Some 
not in a great spot for me on this one, but no deltas to the gloves for EV1. No deltas for EV2. Copy. Deltas dry for EV1. I have for EV2. Okay, and so let's, uh, Josh, you want to make sure your tools and tethers are clear. Back me up on that if you would, Frank. This side looks great, and I see you routed to the uh, square scoop. Um, and the side of the footplate that I can see looks good. It looks clear. Sounds good. So we are clear. Copy. Um, so then visors, glove heaters, cooling, uh, just uh, like we said, you're going to be in the sun for most of this translation. Any risk of my hands getting too hot with the gloves on, glove heaters on? A-firm, a that's, that's a risk. Not do that. Okay, so glove heaters are going to come off. Copy. Visor, let's open them now and do water checks and then visors will come back down. If you bring your visor up so I can see if you've got water. Two hours, 13 minutes in. Josh Cassida about to uh, pull the ISS rollout solar array away from the flight support equipment to move it uh, toward the uh, Starboard 4 Trust worksite for its installation. And, uh, Josh, you want to make sure that your heels are secure. And give me one more check on that. They feel secure to me. The left one was the one I think you were looking at earlier. Looks secure from here. Okay. Fields are secure, Nick. Okay, one last check. Gauntlets. I am closed on left and right. And for EV2. Okay, and so, uh, Josh, you're going to maintain control of the IROSA in the FSC. Uh, Frank, you're going to release the bolt and then install the scoop with that long-duration tie-down tether on it. Uh, Josh, when you're ready, you're going to give the go to Frank. Frank, your settings are Bravo 3, Counter 3. Bravo 3, Counter 3. And stand by for one second after you're set. And Frank, those are good sets. Frank Rubio about to, to release the final two bolts holding uh, the array in place on the flight support equipment. Cassidy ready to pull that array out of the FSE to begin uh, movement over to the Starboard 4 Trust worksite. Bravo 3, Counter 3, sir. We'll be back uh, momentarily with our video capability from the International Space Station, just now passing between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system push it away from me. Once you get it on there, if you can confirm that, I just want to plan ahead. Sure. That would be going to be a little harder to get off yep. when we get over there to the mod kit. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, you've got my go for sure. And guys, we're 10 seconds from a 20-second handover. Verify I have a go to release you too. You have a go. Okay. All right. Let's do it, Frank. Wow, it's really going. Oh, okay. Or 20. Nah, it's ripped. Okay. Right. Get it on there quick. This one's really trying to get away. Okay. Are you in? Watch that up there, Rosa. 
the wheels on this uh, arm are interfering with the insertion. The, up, the upper arm? Yeah, or our arm. Um, oh, don't, it's, uh, it's trying to get away here, Frank. Okay, hold on, I gotta put it on lock. You ready for me to go to lock? Yeah, go to lock. Oh, jeez. All right, okay. Okay. Let's push it away. To lock. Okay. Get, can you get my ret and put it on the uh, scoop so I don't have to let go? I tell you what. I'm gonna. Yep. So I, I have it. I have it towards you. All right. I got the scoop. All right. I got both scoops. If you can get my ret and put it on the long duration tie down tether, we're good. It's uh maybe a bit of a reach for yeah, you. Yeah, unfortunately, but I can hold the scoop. Okay, why don't you hold it, uh, hold it in the FSC? I have the uh, scoop. Okay, you got the scoop and you're pushing Zenith? You're push, pushing yep. Zenith towards, towards you. Towards me, that's good. All right, stand by. All right, and am I close? Um, okay, let's tell me which way to go. Let me have, this, let me have the right. Okay. Okay, you take I, the scoop. I'm back to the scoop. Two hours, 19 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. Rubio and Cassida working in tandem as they uh, begin to move the ISS rollout solar array away from the flight support equipment upon which it was launched in the trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon. Okay. You can see behind the array that Cassett is about to move to the starboard fortress, the second of the two ISS rollout solar arrays that these two spacewalkers will install on the other side of the backbone of the station onto the port fortress on December 19th. And I'll have to just go down towards the bottom of my row so I want oh, to get perfect. It. That's great. Good. Towards the bottom. I'm sorry, towards my head. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. Got it. Upside down here. Hey, Nick, we got it. Uh, it's on there. It was pushing pretty hard to get off, and now it no longer is. So we are uh, we're in a good config and stable. Copy all, Josh. Good news. Uh, nice work together on that one. And so uh, we've got a caution here not to uh, release the IROSA, or prior to releasing the IROSA, make sure the FSC is not moving. Uh, so when Frank gets into a good position, You'll be able to slide the IROSA nader to release it from the pins. Got it. I am in route towards uh Okay. Sounds good. Duke, you understand that uh, Frank is making his way to Delta for watching? Are you with us? I heard you, Josh. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so Frank, I see you in a decent position. Um, and so if you're good with it, and then, Josh, you're able to slide the IROSA nader, and that should slide off of those pins that are on the FSC, then you'll have it. Copy that. We're going to get a hold of uh, Duke here first. Okay. We are standing by and ready for the maneuver to publish IROSA removal on your go. All right. Stand by. We're going to release from FSC first. And if everybody's go, Frank, are you a go? You're a go. All right. So we're going to go nader slightly, and you can help guide that if you want. Okay, hey, that's good. Okay. Okay. All right, now pull. There we go. Okay. And the ISS rollout solar array, the third in the series of uh, upgraded uh, augmenting arrays for the station, is free from its flight support structure. All right, Frank. You've got the comm for the robo. Okay. 
And uh, Duke, you have a go for GCA to publish fibrosis removal. Okay, this is going to bring EV1 body down four meters. Copy. Starting motion. I should have about three inches of clearance from the gobble fixture. Okay. I see motion. Good motion. Clear the gobble fixture in about 10 inches. Okay. Are you putting any force into that, Rissa? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to just uh, keep it slightly away from. So I'm about two inches of clearance. Okay. Okay, you are clear of grapple fixture. Continue. Copy. How's it feel? Somehow heavy and light at the same time. Okay, you are completely clear from this side, so. Copy. Safe travels. Thank you. All right, Nick, I'm going to Half meters to go. Copy. Say it again, how many meters? Two and a half meters to go. Copy. Smooth as glass, Josh Cassida and Frank, moves uh, with the ISS rollout solar array away from uh, the flight support equipment on the truss of the station. One meter to go. Copy. Ramping out motion. Copy. Okay, that is our published position. We are setting up for the two and a half minute IROSA pitch joint OCAS. Okay. A good view of uh, Josh Cassida with the ISS rollout solar array. On uh, Earth, it has a mass of about 750 pounds. Once unfurled, it uh, will measure uh, 60 feet long by 20 feet wide, attached uh, to the integrated electronics assembly alongside uh, the original solar array on the starboard four truss, producing power for the 3A power channel.
I make. I have a uh, good socket slot with a 2-inch on my PGT, good pull test, and a 12-inch back on the caddy, good pull test. Do you want me to leave the rep that's holding it outside on the outside of the bag or the inside of the bag? And that's copy good socket swap, Frank. Uh, what we want you to do is put everything inside that bag. We're, we're cleaning it up, and uh, if you want to close it up with everything inside, uh, turn the doors facing the tower and cinch down the straps. That's how we'll leave it as you uh, move out. Okay. Can I leave the fire side that was holding the PGT on the outside? That's affirmative. Okay, EV1, we are set up for the joint OCAS. This is going to pitch you up and bring you in front of the FSE. Okay, I copy. Just a heads up, I'm having a, I get a whole lot of pitch on it, so uh, we'll take the 3-2-1. That'll be super helpful. Okay, are you ready? I understand pitching on my back. Pitching up. Hey, firm, pitching up. EV1 is ready. Three, two, one. Starting motion. Okay, Nick, um, everything is inside the bag and the bag is closed. Yep, copy that, Frank. Uh, you've got the doors closed. We'd like the doors facing the tower, and if you can cinch those straps as best you can that are holding it in place from, that's perfect. Ground's happy, Frank. Okay, great. Okay, and verify from here, I go to the left side of the, uh, the uh, market. Yep, uh, Frank, the next step is uh, going to grab, uh, you're going to relocate Josh's uh, red hook. I'll copy, thank you. And Frank, that's out there on the Cedar Rail, Meyer Marker Ramping out. Copy that. Three, two, one. All right, I've got the hang of it now. Nicely done. We are in pause hold. Man, you guys are smooth. Copy. Ah, uh, you know, that's squeegee. All right, we're setting up for a three-minute outboard joint OCAS. I understand outboard. ED1 is ready. Frank, let me get a picture of you. <laughs> I don't even know where you are now. <laughs> it's okay. Easy one, we are set. This is going to bring you body left and body down a little bit. Okay, body left, body down. Easy one is ready. 
Three, two, one, starting motion. I think it in motion. Oh, this one's faster. Wow, a lot faster. Okay. Flying toward the uh, west coast of South America, Josh Cassida holding the ISS rollout solar array, being maneuvered toward the uh, starboard four truss worksite for its installation to augment uh, power capability for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. We are two hours, 34 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, everything going very smoothly, the crew running ahead of the timeline for the day. Okay, Nick, I have Josh's red hook on my red reel. Reel is unlocked, and his hook is unlocked. Okay, Frank, we copy that. Check your gauntlets down, and then you're heading out to the S4 IEA, and you're going to be stowing the red hook near the radiator. Okay. And gauntlets are down. Okay, and we are ramping out. Copy. Okay, that's Basil, and we are setting up for the next, it'll be a three-minute IEA lineup FOR OCAS. I'll take it. Okay, EV-1, we are set. This will bring you body in and up under the IEA. EV-1 copies, and I'm ready. Three, two, one, starting motion. Of course, I see good motion. And Frank, Nick, back back with you. Um, got a caution here about the red hook location. It's going to be near an IEA radiator, so just be aware of that. The handrail you're looking for is 2217. 
on there. You are clear of Arosa, but I don't think you realize how close we are. We're only three feet away from each other when you're trying. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Oh, no problem. It's not an issue. It does look just like that. <laughs> Wrapping our motion. Copy. All right, next will be <coughs> Red Hook, Josh's Red Hook is on 2217, the inboard expansion. Yeah, copy, uh, Frank, 2217, you got that down. Just on the edge of our view here, it looks like you might be crossed back at the, uh, just right where the Sarge is at. Just want to have you double check those safety tethers. Yep, it looks like it's under our OR6 real quick. Copy, thanks. Okay, we are pause hold and setting up for the GCA to publish IROSA install. Okay. I think we can do that without Frank in position. Do you agree? The published position? I, I've got good clearance. I can see um, on this side of the IROSA, so, uh, so station Venus, I can see just fine. A copy, and we have good views as well. We're setting up. And Josh, we chatted over it. If you if you got good clearance, uh, we're good to press with the uh, the the GCA for the uh, published install. I certainly got good clearance, uh, and right and forward, and uh, from my chin up, from my chest up. I know I'm in a good configure here, in a Okay, copy that, uh, Frank, and uh, you're going to head out into the left side of the mounting bracket. Do you need the comm anymore, Frank? Okay, EV1 is a ready GCA to uh, published install position. I'll let you know if I lose clearance. Okay, we copy and we're setting up. You okay with this, Frank? Yeah, I'm uh, 30 seconds away. Sounds good. I can see you translating. No rush, dude, but we are ready, GCA. Hey guys, I've got some cautions and warnings I'm going to read up real quick while Frank gets into final position. So don't put your fingers in the IROSA pin slots on the inside or an outside of the root beam structure and then when on the outside of the mod kit, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and protruding trunnions. Also, you're going to want to, uh, when on the mod kit, not impart loads simultaneously. That's translation, unfolding, bolt ops connectors. Uh, so don't move simultaneously. Sudden stops and quick drabs are not allowed on the mod kit, so translate slow. And 30 pounds max lateral force on the mod kit uh, during and after IROSA soft capture.
You want to copy? Me too, copy. Okay, EV-1, we are all set up. This is going to bring you a body left to about two and a half meters. Okay, and I'm going to turn the GCA over to Frank. So EV-2, you've got the GCA. Okay, copy that. And to uh, verify you said this is G GCA to publish, correct? Hey, okay, friend, this is a GCA to publish, bringing EV-1 body left. Okay, you are clear. You are Starting clear. motion. Two hours, 43 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio about to begin work to install the ISS rollout solar array onto its mounting bracket on the starboard four truss of the International Space Station. Cassida wearing the suit uh, with the red stripes along the legs, holding uh, the IROSA as it is called by its acronym. Again, uh, these are 750 pounds apiece in mass. Once unfurled after their installation will be 60 feet long and 20 feet wide to augment uh, the electrical capability of the 3A power channel of the International Space Station. This is the third in a series of at least six IROSAs to be installed on the International Space Station. We are ramping out motion. Copy. Okay, Frank, that is the published position. Great, that's a great position. Frank, I think we're going to need a little bit more body left for me. So in closer to you, the plug in. Okay. Just because I'll be at the uh, far end. Yep, so the uh, scoop bottom only has about three inches clearance. So the bracket, do you want to remove that first? I see it. Uh, why don't we do why don't we do it this way? Look us. Um, we'll move this way. GCA and then take off the scoop. Careful, careful, careful. Let's see. Um me one second, it's just in part the forces here. Okay. All right. Okay, um, yeah. Duke, let's go GCA, 10 centimeters, body left, towards the mass canister. That's Copy, 10 centimeters, body left, towards the mass canister, starting motion. See motion, good motion. Jump out in three, two, one. All right, Josh, unfortunately, you're press mount. Only has about an inch of clearance. Yep, I'm watching it. I can see my shoulder. We're good here. Just watch your helmet on the bottom there. Okay. So we don't push it away. Yep. Um, when do you want to go co-linear with the, uh, the strut there? You put your feet wherever you want. So yeah. I'll turn it over to you, and I'll put the one handrail there, and then I'll take off the scoop. Okay. I've got this handrail. Okay, let us know if you're done with the GCA. We have GCA complete. Be GCA complete. Can you good with our plan? He's got a hand on it. I'm going to take off the scoop in my left hand and do my best to put it on the mini workstation. And the brakes are on. Go fire both to install. Copy. Thank, thank you. you, Duke. And Josh, that sounds like a good plan. All right, Frank, I'm going to take my left hand off. I've got this on. You probably want to just not, if you can, not put any forces in because it doesn't take much. Okay. okay. You are going to have to put a fair amount of force on that lever, so. Got it. That's unfortunate. I'm going to go through. Yeah, through capture and all the way to release. So. I feel very comfortable seeing a loose end. <laughs> it looks like you're a pass capture. Looks like you might be in release. Right? It's hard to tell from there. You don't feel too good. Trying not to touch. 
I'm not going to put this in my uh, mini workstation. Nope. Just let it float. Should be clear. Okay, uh, let's go bring it towards me to align laterally first. Let's say about 20 centimeters. Translate towards you. Correct. Can you? Watch your hand. Um, I'm going to do the pitch. Let's see. My, roll for our frame of reference. Okay. I'm going to roll it. Your end. Hurts you. Cassett and Rubio in the process of installing uh, the IROSA on a mounting bracket on the starboard four truss. There'll be two soft capture features properly engaged when the uh, IROSA itself is correctly aligned on the mounting bracket. Yeah, we are on the platform and aligned. We just got to bring it towards the soft capture features. All right, so right. straight back. We'll stick it in the hole first and then go to the soft capture, yeah? Okay, yep, ready? Yep, continue. Push, again, continue. Four, yep, okay. That's it for going towards the... No, nope, I'll bring it uh, maybe a centimeter towards me. Translate. Yep. Okay. And now keep pushing towards the mass canister. Have a button. I seem to want to go. I need to probably check the uh, soft gas for features. I can see they're the same, and they are caught and locked. Okay. Like they have not triggered. Okay, we're aligned. I see the tabs are almost perfectly centered. So maybe manually release a soft capture? That just feels like we're in the slot. No, we're not in the slot. Oh, okay. We're just, we're aligned, but we need to bring it um, back towards the mass canister. About okay. two inches. Um, there we go. Something's blocking it. All right, Frank, real, let's slow down just for one second. Um, I can't go any closer to the mod kit. I'm taking my right hand and pushing. Yep. So there's something blocking it. Okay. And when you pull yours, we, we yaw. Okay, let me check. Um, do you have it? I need to... Yeah, go don't, yeah, don't, don't push it. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I don't see the soft capture features up, so they should not be the ones blocking it. Right. So you can see the the slot. You yep. can see the teeth that go in them. Yeah, and there's nothing uh Okay. Well, now we're uh, come back towards me another three inches. Stop. And now we're, once again, we're aligned. We are flat against the platform. We're not flat right now. Yeah. But that's okay. I just came up. Okay. Um, we're aligned. All right, can we go straight aft? Uh, tor towards the runway? Towards the mass canister, yep. Okay. So something's keeping us from going. Okay, both are in, um, both of the tabs are slightly in there. Is it, an, is it an angle thing where we're not flat enough? Uh, my side looks perfectly flat on, on the platform. How's yours? It is flat and flush. Yeah. Hold on for one second. Get away from me. Hey, Nick, I got a question about the mod kit. Thank you there. Good for you there. 
Yeah, I got you, Josh. Confirm. I have you loud and clear. All right, so on the mod kit, there's an arrow that I think is the very center of the mod kit. There's a, it's a label, and there's a left label and a right label. Can you confirm that the hinge will be lined up with that arrow? Checking. If that's the case, Frank, we're going to need to translate your way about a half inch. I don't know how that makes sense with your plot. Uh, well, right now, that wouldn't make sense, actually. We, we translated back towards you a little bit. Okay, so let's go a little bit towards you. Okay. Continue about okay, right there. Okay, so that is that arrow is not at the hinge. The hinge is going to be about an inch by direction on that arrow. Okay. I would have thought that the hinge would have lined up right with that midpoint. Yeah, Josh, uh, that arrow should line up dead center with the hinge. Okay, Nick, then uh, I'm sure you can't see very well my HECA. The problem is, Frank's got the slot slots aligned, but that arrow is not where the hinge is going to be. That arrow is about, right now, a half inch towards him, meaning the hinge will be a half inch uh, mod kit right from the arrow if we were able to open it. Yeah, copy, Josh, and, and we can see it in the WVS. We're talking about it. So I gotta let go real quick just to realign my body. Got it. Got it. Just watch you don't hit the arrow so if you can. Yep, thank you. Yep. All right, so right now our yaw is off a little bit. Uh, the tabs are aligned but my tab is uh, no longer. Oh, no, watch your hand. Yeah, we're, we're pitching down. Okay. Thanks. All right. So you got to go your way and a yaw. You said. Yeah. Give me a second. I'm losing my position. Here. And Frank, Josh, our recommendation here is, Frank, if you could cycle the soft dock, the T handles, just to let them extend and then and then reset them. Uh, Josh, you have the uh, Stand by for one second. Okay. Um, I have it. Do you think that's really what's happening? Because I can see the soft dock or the soft capture features just barely sticking out of the surface. But I can see that they're both in the J hooks. I don't. I don't know that those are keeping it from installing. Yeah, copy that. I'm pretty sure it's not. But yeah, we want to make sure they're just not cold stuck and in, uh, in the open position. I see, I see, okay. I have the arrow, sir. Watch your helmet on the arrow, sir. Okay, thank you. And, and There's definitely some friction to these. Yeah, and Frank, what we'd like you to do is have them full deploy, if you can fully extend them so that they would be in the deployed position and then reset them for the uh, capture. Okay. I don't know if you see that, but it just takes a lot of force. There's a lot of friction. Watch your helmet. Yep, yeah, we're, we're watching in the HECA. Thank you. They are cycled okay. several times, and they are in the J position. So, Nick, if I understand, have Frank get these in the slots and then manually uh, release the, uh, the soft captures, correct? Yeah, if you've got it lined up and they're not extending, that's an option to manually release them. You try that, Nick? Or 
Frank, should we do that? Sure. I'll, I'll do my best to hold it in stock. Let me see if I can get you a line and then, uh, okay. Looks like it's going to need to translate your way at least an inch. And then roll your end towards you. Yep. Come towards me, maybe two inches. Right. Approaching the uh, three hour mark in the spacewalk, Josh Cassida, Frank Rubio are fine tuning the alignment of the ISS rollout solar array onto its mounting bracket on the starboard four truss. Okay, we are flat, we're aligned. Okay. If you want, I'll hold it there and you get one of those J-hooks in. But we're not in yet. We have to get slide it in maybe an inch and a half. I mean, so we're aligned. Uh -huh. Just got to go aft. But we can't see what's keeping us from going Yeah. Out. If you can hold this, yeah. Yep. I'll go down and I, and I can actually push on the uh, beam also. Can you hold it here? I can. Okay, you got it. Be real careful not to bump it. Yep. And I can see our yaw is off from this angle. Unfortunately, the sun is right in my eyes, and I can't maintain the angles. And Frank, Josh, just looking at your looking at your helmet cam, it looks like one of the soft dock captures did go down. I don't know if it's engaged or if you're going to need to reset it. Uh, it is not engaged. Reset. Okay. I can actually kind of line us up from this end because the bolt holes are right there. That's great. I, yep, I guess we got to figure out what's keeping us from getting inserted. All right. So right there, we should be lined up. I'm going to pull the uh, soft captures down. We have a third hand right now. That's good. Yep. That's what it was. I can't wait to hear that lesson learned at the debrief. Okay. That's one. Watch your helmet. Okay, that's two. <laughs> Bro, you said he did it. We got two installed. Holy cow. No kidding. There's a huge side down here. Well done. That's not, that's not the way it was supposed to be, but it worked. All right, nice job, Josh. I know you've been <laughs> muscling through that. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to blink the sweat out of my eyes. Yeah. At the three-hour mark, the IROSA is now uh, engaged and uh, mounted on the mounting bracket on the modification kit on the starboard four truss, a little elbow grease required, but nonetheless, IROSA is on its mounting bracket on the S4 truss. A couple second breather here after struggling with that. That's more than more than cool. Oh, the sun setting. I think it's too. Yeah, that sun setting is going to help. All right, uh, my RET is off. We are staying where installed because we've got two staff captures. So the RET is off. The scoop is going to stay on for now, correct? Frank, or correct, Nick? That's affirmative. Okay. Uh, Koichi and Duke, we are installed and ready for the back-off maneuver. Bobby, we are setting up for the IROSA back-off. Feels weird not to be holding onto an IROSA now. I know. It also feels weird to have the Earth completely above you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and guys, big picture, Wait, big picture. Down. Yeah, starting rep, guys, just big picture. You're well ahead of timeline. You're going to see an eclipse come. This is not the one we're targeting for the cable mate. We're, we're working on the next eclipse after this one. So when it gets dark, we're not behind. Got it. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Thanks, man. Okay, EV-1, we are set up. This is going to bring you body right about two and a half meters. With the IROSA installed on its mounting bracket, 
The next step, uh, once Cassida is uh, backed away at the end of the uh, station's robotic arm from uh, the work site to provide clearance will be uh, the release of final hinge restraint bolts that will enable the IROSA to unfold like a flip phone to its uh, pre-deployment uh, orientation. Sleep on, Frank. I cannot wait to hear what it was. It was just the uh, the outside soft capture one just wasn't. Uh, so I just pulled it all the way down and then it slid right in. Awesome. I see. It just wasn't sliding past the yeah. little nub. Soft capture wasn't so soft. <laughs> Not quite soft enough. <laughs> Motion. Meanwhile, the space station is about to fly into an orbital sunset over Cologne, the home of the Columbus Control Center. And setting up for a two and a half minute R6 back off joint OCAS. Give you one copy. Frank, we uh, see you in position, uh, waiting for Josh to get in position through these uh, uh, Joe Casses. If you can go over to that third soft capture, the one we're going to use when we unfold it, we'd like you to try to cycle that one as well to see if we can get ahead of the game. Okay, and 10 seconds to a handover. Okay, EV-1, we are set up for the joint OCAS. This is going to basically body, yaw, you left 90 degrees, and bring you over to face IROSA. EV-1, copy, then I'm ready. Three, two, one, starting motion. I see good motion. Nick, can we start talking about setting for R6? Yeah, Josh, uh, those settings are going to be Bravo 2 clockwise. I'm sorry, counter clockwise 2. Bravo 2 counter 2. Bravo 2 counter clockwise 2. Copy. Yep, Josh, and, and uh, before we drive R6, we're going to daisy chain those scoops together and hand them off to, to Frank. That sounds great. that we're going to uh, get to well, with the uh, long duration tight on tether, get that other scoop off, and then I've got Bravo to R2 set for R6 when we get there. Yep, 
Copy all. Those are good words, Josh. Sure haven't gone very far for a whole lot of trips. <laughs> Feel the same thing with that right uh, soft catcher? No, that one seems to be a lot easier to move. Oh, wow. yep. great. Okay, that's the end of the Joe cast. We are set up for a GCA to publish R6 approach. EV1 is ready for a GCA to publish for R6. Our GCA. Okay, EV-1, we are set. This will bring you body in 120 centimeters. Body in 120 centimeters, EV-1 is ready. Copy, starting motion. I see good motion. Okay, our cameras are degrading. If you can watch your boot plate and your ingress aid. Got them both. Fifty centimeters. Okay, we're clear. Ramping out. Concur. Okay, that is our published position. That is going to work fine. GCA complete. Copy. GCA complete. Go for unbolting. Copy. I think I've got the other end of the long duration tight end tether on uh, the scoop here, and I'm happy to release. Yeah, copy, Josh. You've got those uh, on each end of that long duration. You're going to pass it off to Frank. You want me to give you a wrap? Uh, I'm going to hand, I'm ready okay, right now to uh, both. Okay. I'll pass them both to you and then we'll do a red swap. No problem. Okay. I'll just take it, I can solve it. No problem. There we go. Slowly pass you on. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 11 minutes into today's spacewalk by Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio. And Frank, you're just going to temp stow those on the exterior right. bag end. Okay. The uh, two spacewalkers began. Uh, the 256th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, moving out of the Quest airlock after placing their suits on battery power and uh, working extremely efficiently, have uh, removed the ISS rollout solar array, one of two delivered last week on the uh, SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply craft to the International Space Station, removing it from its flight support equipment. Cassada then transported uh, the array over to the starboard fortress, where he and Rubio, moments ago, uh, installed the array on its mounting bracket. The next step will be uh, to uh, begin uh, the process of releasing hinges, basically hinge restraint bolts, that will enable the array to unfold like a flip phone into an unstowed position 
prior to the time that the array itself uh, would be bolted in place uh, on the integrated electronics assembly, electrically connected to the same electrical system currently powering the legacy array or the original solar array that was delivered on the space shuttle Atlantis on the STS-117 mission in June of 2007 to augment power for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. We're going to start driving here, R6, Bravo 2, counter 2. Copy. Go. There's 19 turns, it has popped out, and actually this one does have a white line. Copy, and we see the white line as well. Uh, so you can stow the PGT and then uh, you'll work with uh, Duke uh, to go through some maneuvers to get in position for the unfold. Just make sure I didn't miss anything there, Nick. It's still the PGT and maneuver is at risk. Yeah, uh, affirmative. It's uh, you're going to go to a R6 back off position and then uh, work for the APFR egress maneuvers. Great. Sounds good. Okay, and we have a maneuver to the R6 back off when you're ready. All right, stand by. All right, EV-1 is ready for the R-6 back off. Okay, this will be body out, 120 centimeters. Copy, body out, 120 centimeters. Starting motion. I see good motion. Fifty centimeters. Okay. Ramping out motion. Copy. Okay, that's our published position. We are setting up for a three minute APFR egress joke. Okay, stand by. Frank, I'm seeing your your safety tether go right over my head. Um, I'm assuming it's not caught in in my helmet. Fortunately, uh, with your light shining right on me, I can't. Uh, Looks like it's going straight and not hung up on me. Yeah, no, it's going straight, and it was going straight when I came here. Okay. Yep. And do you know if uh, we're moving towards my head or hopefully towards my feet? Uh, Eagle One, for big picture here, first we're going to yaw you right 90 degrees and then we're going to move you body left back towards Irosa, and that's your egress position. Okay. Um, just for your essay, I've got Frank's safety tether going right over my head, like I can almost touch it with my hand. Um, is it a problem just to give me uh, you know, 10 centimeters towards my feet, and then we'll definitely be clear? Uh, 
Okay, checking. It's a joint OCAS, um, so I don't think it'll keep you nader if that's what you're looking for. I think we got to send this one over to Robo. Um, I can't say for sure that I'm not going to go right through this safety tether on this joint OCAS. Hey, Josh, uh, we were chatting about it. Uh, in this next maneuver, there's no body up motion. Um, if we do go body down, we'll need to change up some modes, but uh, you shouldn't go body up at all in this next maneuver. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nick. Brad Duke, I am a go, and I'll keep an eye on the safety tether as best I can. Happy standby. Before the uh, bolts are driven uh, to basically free up the hinge restraints on the uh, ISS rollout solar array, Josh Cassida will be placed in a position to uh, leave the articulating portable foot restraint that he's been mounted on at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm, which has been driven uh, by Koichi Wakata with the assistance of Nicole Mann from the robotics workstation in the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station. And I am opening from the safety tether with that motion, so it's great. Good to hear. Okay, thanks. Yeah, doing great. How are you? I'm great. If you said you're Rosa, it could be a lonely job. <laughs> Amazing how quickly your brain adapts. Uh, you know, like I see myself being right side up, and I'm sure you see yourself being right side up. Yeah. Join me here shortly. Well, go slow when you get off, because it'll be a little disorienting. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of the JOCAS. We are setting up for GCA to publish APFR egress position. Copy, and you are go and ready GCA to the published APFR egress position. We copy.
Okay, EV1, we are set up. This is going to bring you body left 1.5 meters, and we have the graded cameras, so if you can help us with clearance from your body and the APFR to Irosa. Okay, that's going to be hard because we're moving towards my left shoulder, um, but I can see right now all of Irosa. We are currently clear. Okay, if at any point you lose Irosa, let us know and we will pause. Okay. Starting motion. Good motion. Clear. Copy one meter to go. Copy. Real clear. Here my real I cannot see my boot plate or anything below me. 40 centimeters. Copy. Ramping out motion. Copy. I'm going to need to continue GCA. Let's go body back uh, 20 centimeters. Okay, copy. Body out 20 centimeters. That's right. Starting mode. And you confirm you have clearance? Uh, in front of me, yes. Behind me, no. I can see you. are clear. Okay, we're coming. Body out 20 centimeters. Starting motion. Copy. Good motion. Time to go. Continue. Ramp out. Three, two, one. Ramp out. Okay, we're possible. Okay, and now I'll need 40 centimeters body left, and I have good clearance to the mod chip. Okay, confirm 40 centimeters body left. Affirmative, 40 centimeters, body left. Okay. Three, two, one, ramp up. Awesome. Copy. GCA complete. Copy. GCA complete. Brakes are on. Go for APFR egress. Copy. Go for APFR egress. And Josh, you'll uh, want to just use that ingrace aid only when you're egressing. I know the mounting bracket might be uh, in easy reach, but uh, just use the ingress aid. And when you're done with it, you want to low it, stow it in a low profile. Okay, I am egress now using only the ingress aid. Now I can touch the mod kit. My understanding is correct. A, a, a firm, uh, understand your egress. Do you want to stow the ingress aid in a low profile? Understood. Okay. Now I made a bad decision on that GCA because I'm about to lose. Length of an ingress aid. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 26 minutes into the uh, spacewalk by Cassetta and Rubio. About uh, 26 minutes ago, the ISS rollout solar array, the first of two delivered last week on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply mission to the station, was installed on its mounting bracket on the starboard four truss. Josh Cassida, who had uh, spent the last couple of hours at the end of the uh, station's robotic arm and a portable foot restraint, 
First uh, hauling the uh, array over from its flight support equipment to the mounting position on the starboard four truss has now exited uh, the foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm and he will set up shop uh, with Rubio to uh, drive a couple of bolts to release the final hinge restraint that will enable the array to fold open. Disregard, we will not need the GCA. Copy, no GCA required. Okay, brakes are back on. Thank you. Once uh, the array is folded open, then uh, Cassida will be working uh, to drive a series of bolts that will uh, affix uh, the uh, array to the integrated electronics assembly on the International Space Station. Electrical connections uh, will be hooked up. That basically mates the array's electrical system to the uh, original array that sits on the uh, starboard four, starboard three truss that was delivered 15 years ago to the station on the uh, STS-117 mission of the shuttle Atlantis. The two uh, spacewalkers will then uh, monitor the uh, unfolding, basically the unfurling of the array to its full length of 60 feet following uh, the tensioning of that array to its final configuration. Obviously, you're just going to want to maintain awareness of your safety tether back to the arm because that's where your anchor's at. Give me one second and I'm just going to get it in front of my body as opposed to behind. And Josh, as you're working that, uh, you're going to want to eventually get a fair lead on that lower right strut, hand, lower strut, lower handrail to help keep your safety tether clear. Copy that. Sure. Yeah, we we'll want to put that in after the maneuver. After the maneuver, okay. Uh, with that. each other is clear. This is the uh, third in the series of at least six IROSAs uh, that uh, are being delivered and installed on the International Space Station. The next one also uh, carried to the station on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon a week ago is scheduled to be installed on the port for truss of the station by Cassida and Rubio on December 19th. This is going to be ISS port three meters and zenith two and a half meters okay we copy and frank when uh when they're way clear let me know and then i'll flip around and we'll uh we'll get to work okay each of these uh irosas will produce and are producing more than 20 kilowatts of electricity again uh, designed to augment the existing power supply of the international space station for future research and utilization operations Glance, just turn your feet down, body towards your, towards
That's making it hard because it's moving on me. Okay, EV1, we have about 85 centimeters zenith to go, and we're having a hard time seeing the APFR from the truss. Can you help us out? Uh, I cannot. Frank, can you? Give me one second. APFR is clear. Um, if you're looking for clearance from the IA, we're clear. Okay, we're going to continue Zenith 85 centimeters. centimeters to go. All right, Duke, I'm kind of losing you now because of a, um, a light that's kind of directly at my eyes, so I can't quite clear the last 10 centimeters or so. Okay, we are at the published position, position, and brakes are on. Uh, stand by while we set up some cameras. And so, Josh, once you get that uh, fair lead in on that lower strut, then you're you're on the right side for, to get into position for the unfold. I uh, got a warning that when we do that unfold, um, it's a pinch point, so keep clear of the hinge on Irosa. Okay, understood. Give you a few copies. I think this fairly is going to stay, given where they are. So I've got SA on my tether. It's going across the front of my body to the right. Actually, just this. I'm going to try to get it on my left side. Thank you, Gavin. Yep, I got you. Copy. And Josh, just to let you know the intent of that fair lead, uh, we're just trying to clear your safety tether out of the way of the unfold as, as that happens. So, you know, using that lower handrail to try to string it down towards your feet uh, was the idea. Understood. Yep. Josh, I think for now, if you just leave it on the outside, your body will help kind of clear it. I think so, too. Yep. So we're just going to go across our body on that one. Yep. And I think that will keep it uh, out of the way of the unfold, if you agree. Yep, I, I agree. Yep, and if you guys have awareness of it, you're good. Okay, V1, we're set up on our end. Let us know if you need a GCA once you get to the tether swamp. Okay, that's a little bit down the road. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, Koichi, that was amazing. Thank you for the ride. I will definitely get on my ride share app and give you five stars when we get back inside. That's a V of your health, Josh. Okay, uh, Nick, we are ready for the unfold if you are. Your go. Okay. Starting to open. Coming your way. All right. And the soft capture is armed. Watch those fingers, and here it comes. Real clear. Okay. All cables and tethers are clear. Yep, you're clear on this side. Okay. 
help you out with that soft catcher. Oh, actually, it's engaged. Nice. Uh, no, it's not. Nope. Okay. No, 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 let me release it. Okay. Okay, it's released. Okay, now. Now it's got you. Okay. Nice. Very nice to done. Copy, guys. Great work. That's a good install. It's a great config. Um, while you're in that position, we'd like to get glove, hap, and gauntlet checks from both of you. Okay. Gloves for EV1. No noticeable changes. And hap is dry, and gauntlets are covered. And EV2, no noticeable changes on my gloves and dry hat. I'm going to throw covered. Copy. Good checks for both of you. Three hours, 38 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, the ISS rollout solar array has unfolded. You're going to work to stow the long-duration tie-down tether with those scoops on it inside of crew lock bag M. And, uh, Josh, you're going to translate uh, to work the hinge bolts. Copy. R7, R8. Correct. That's affirmative, R7 and R8. And uh, you can start with whatever one is convenient. Frank, just for heads up, when you are in the bag, you're gonna retrieve the AET with the AMS knob on there. Okay, copy that. Frank, with that moving anchor of my safety tether, just want to make sure that now I can get it off to my left. It's currently open by right. Yep. So I'm going to do. It's it's uh, clear. Just see it. Yep. Oh, yeah. That, that'll work. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, bring your lights down. Keep going down on your legs. Good. You're clear. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. The two spacewalkers now will uh, tighten uh, a pair of hinge restraint bolts to make sure that the unfolded ISS rollout solar array does not uh, have any motion at the hinge itself. We're three hours, 40 minutes into the spacewalk. The crew continues to work slightly ahead of the timeline, everything uh, proceeding in excellent shape. Okay, R7, R8. I am, I am here and understand we're going to drive this clockwise. That's affirmative. Alpha 1. These uh, bolts uh, that uh, the two spacewalkers are driving will uh, physically attach the IROSA to the mast canister that um, basically also is the, uh, the base, if you will, for the uh, original solar array on the starboard four truss of the International Space Station. The IROSA now will accompany that original array to increase uh, electrical output for the 3A power channel. Alpha 1, clockwise 2 is set. That's good settings, and so you're going to drive those hinge bolts uh, 14 to 16 turns. Uh, just let us know which one you're starting with. Copy. Sorry, it was 14 to 16? That's what I heard. And 
and based on that body position uh, in the pool, uh, that might be a position that Frank can help uh, stabilize you a little bit. That sounds great. Understand 14 to 16 turns, correct? A firm. Oh, we just missed it, the power. It was on, uh, but it, I think we just expired our 50 or 45 minutes. Uh. Okay, just to say it again, Alpha 1, clockwise. Two. Okay. Those are good settings. Yes. I'm going to try to put my feet here, and if there's a way you could stabilize my shoulder, we shouldn't get too much torque into this guy. Okay. You want higher? Nope. It's good. Okay, good green light, actual torque of 2.4, and I have 17 turns. Copy, that's a good R7. Sorry, I didn't tell you which one I was doing. That for that HECA. All right, that leaves R8, and Frank, if we could do something similar. Okay. Okay, 17 turns again, the green light, and actual torque of 2.3. Copy, that's a good R8. So now we're going to work to try to release them one turn. So the new setting is alpha 1 counterclockwise 2. Alpha 1 is set. Counterclockwise 2 is set. And I'll try to go get R7 first here, and we're doing turn or less, correct? Copy. One turn or less. There's three quarters on R7, comes R8. Quarters on R8. Copy. A good release on both R7 and R8. You can stow the PGT, and then Frank's going to hand you that AET with the AMS knob and cap keeper.
Okay. This, thank you. And there's two rats on there, so you, sh you should just be able to use it as is. And Frank, there should be enough stretch that yeah. you can just leave it ratted. On hand tight on R7. Copy, that's going to be less than one turn, less than 30 inch pounds. Hey, that's less than 30 inch pounds, and that was about half a turn. Copy, Josh, good R7. A good look uh, at the uh, solar rays at the uh, starboard four truss of the International Space Station, 112 feet long. 39 feet wide, about uh, to be augmented by the ISS rollout solar array, which when unfurled will be about 60 feet long, providing an additional 20 kilowatts of power for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. Safety uh, tether on my left side, and now we're moving around. Just make sure, I think it's still in a good config. It is, yes, awesome. All right. I am on the cap keeper hook for, this must be J4. Uh, J3. Oh, J4, correction. Okay. Sorry, I saw your uh, end effect. Yeah, that's okay. I do need to move that for sure. Okay. J4 is off. And let's put this. That's a lot going on there. Just grab a hand on the scoop. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, right. That's okay. Let's see. Um, here it is. Thank you. That sun is something, huh? Mm -hmm. Three. That might keep happening, Frank. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it on for you. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's, that sounds good. And then the next one, let's do. Let's try to do all four in the same area. Um, uh, that does really bad. There's plenty of hooks, right? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. All right, Nick, that's four caps for J1 through four. Right. Then I think we'll do MDGLs, right? Yep, copy, Josh. Uh, good release on those caps. And just a heads up, uh, your, your head is pretty close to the IROSA blanket. Thank you. Out of the sun. Russ is already attracting it. <laughs> and so we're going to use the cap keeper from the bag and get the uh, caps on the pre routed cables now. Okay. You can grab yours first, too? Sure. Good idea. I do. I have it. Hold it here for me. Okay. Clear by Rosa, right? Yeah, yep. All right. Maybe the right cap. 
forward over center now. I'm going to ask. And Josh, if you need, you can pull on that back shell to help actuate that. Thanks, Nick. I just did that. We are full over center. That was great training. so hard inside. Approaching the four hour mark in the uh, spacewalk, Cassada and Rubio are uh, working with a number of uh, electrical connector caps prior to the time that we uh, would move into an eclipse period. We uh, will not do any uh, electrical mating or demating of cables during daylight to ensure that uh, the integrated electronics assembly and the solar arrays that exist on the space station are not electrically charged at the time that that delicate work is taking place. The ISS rollout solar array is bolted into place on the starboard Ford truss of the International Space Station. It has been unhinged or unfolded into its uh, unfolded position. And now uh, a series of cables will be connected to mate the uh, new augmented uh, solar array to the existing solar array on the starboard Ford truss, ultimately to produce about 20 additional kilowatts of power for the three.
The uh, crew lock depressurization is continuing in uh, methodical fashion as uh, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann in the equipment lock section of Quest uh, monitor uh, the systems and uh, monitor uh, their two colleagues, Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, through that porthole. The uh, spacewalk officers here in Mission Control uh, report uh, two good suits. Everything looking good for the start of today's spacewalk a short time from now. All right, so airlock pressure at two decimal zero. EV2, tank depress pump man ISO closed. Can work. Depress pump. Van ISO valve is closed. On the UIA, switch depress pump power off. Depress pump is off, OFF. Okay, Blue and Frank, you guys are well prepared. Let's crush it out there today. We'll talk to you on Robo. I'm going to hand you over to Nick, your ground IV, for the initial tether config and the rest of the depress two card. Thanks so much, dude. You guys made it so smooth this morning, and I'm looking forward to working with you in just a couple hours. Thanks, thanks, for you. Yeah, echo the uh, the comments, Duke, Koichi, you guys rocked it. So we are ready. Uh, Josh, Frank, team down here is ready to go. We'll take your initial tether configuration if you want to walk us through the tether packs. Sounds great, Nick. We're ready to go. Starting on my right D-ring extender. 
I've got a red hook, gate closed, slider locked, black on black. That goes to a red reel that is unlocked. There's a green hook on that red reel. The green hook goes to a green reel that is unlocked. And a hook from the red reel is a yellow hook, and it is gate closed, slider locked, black on black on the green reel. Also on that side, I've got my right waist setter, and on my D-ring extender, the gate is closed, slider locked, black on black, and that anchor is actually just temp stowed on my mini workstation. Josh Cassida and uh, soon Frank Rubio uh, reconfirming uh, their suit configuration with uh, spacewalk uh, communicator Nick Haig here in Mission Control. That goes to my single safety tether, which is unhooked, sorry, unlocked on the reel. The anchor is currently on my mini workstation. Also on my left D-ring extender is my left waist tether. Gate closed, slider lock, black on black. It goes to Frank's anchor hook. And both my hook and his anchor hook are gate closed, slider lock, black on black. And that takes us to Frank's reel. Okay, I see my uh, green reel is unlocked. Yellow hook is on my green reel, gate closed, hook lock, black on black. My green hook is to my red reel, it closed, and it is unlocked. My red reel is unlocked. My red hook is on my right D-ring extender, gate closed, hook locked, black on black. And also on my right D-ring extender, is my waist cutter, which is mm -hmm. I can get it for you, Frank. I've got good eyes on it if you'd like. I just got it. Thank you. All right, I see my hook of my waist cutter on my right ear and extender, gate closed, hook lock, black on black, and then my right waist cutter, or my, my waist cutter goes to the airlock ear and extender, gate closed, hook lock, black on black, and that should give us a good load back. Copy, guys. We've got a handover. That's a good config. Once the... Uh Two spacewalkers uh, begin today's excursion. Koichi Wakata will be moving over to the uh, robotic workstation in the Destiny Lab. He will be uh, the Canadarm2 robotic operator who will move Josh Cassida around uh, to the work site of the International Space Station at the Starboard Fortress for him to join Frank Rubio for the uh, initial installation of the IROSA on the mounting bracket that exists at the uh, Starboard 4 worksite. Thank you. And Frank, Josh, back with you after the uh, handover. That was a good tether configuration for uh, both of you. Don't know if you copied before the handover. We did copy. Thank you, Nick. Copy, Nick. And Frank and Josh, uh, when your uh, crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, you can expect to get uh, the EV alert tones. V1 copies, thanks. Either two copies.
Everything uh, continuing to go very well in the uh, pre-spacewalk preparations. Uh, we're about five minutes away from reaching vacuum, at uh, which point uh, there'll be a final series of systems checks and communications checks with Cassida and Rubio before the thermal cover on the Quest airlock is opened. The crew will uh, place their suits on battery power to mark the official start of the clock for today's spacewalk. And then they will open the hatch and uh, one by one make their way outside. Cassida first, followed by Rubio, to begin uh, moving towards uh, the starboard fortress of the International Space Station, where the work will take place today to install and unfurl the third in the series of ISS rollout solar arrays. This, this one uh, to be installed again on the starboard four truss. Once uh, unfurled and uh, tied into the power system of the legacy or original solar array for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station will help to augment electrical output from that power channel. Frank, what do you have on your display right now? Oh, it's blank. Good. It's familiar from last time. Yep. Just a few minutes away from beginning the 256th spacewalk for space station assembly maintenance and upgrades, the 11th spacewalk out of the International Space Station this year, and the second for both Cassida and Rubio.
My pressure has us at 0 0.4. And Nick, just a uh, TCV uh, update. I am set at six. Got me a little bit on the cool side now, but I imagine we're getting to work soon. Yep, copy, Josh. You got a six. Hey, Frank, Josh, good news. I know that took forever, but we're now at uh, 0.5 PSI, so you are go to open the EV hatch and stow it and then put the emergency MPEV in closed. Copy, Nick, that's in work, and I'll let you know when we're done. With the uh, crew lock section of Quest now down at vacuum, uh, the crew soon uh, will be opening up the uh, hatch to the crew lock. They are now at vacuum. They will uh, move out of the Quest airlock a short time from now. We'll be uh, standing by for the call uh, that their suits are placed on internal battery power to mark the official start of today's excursion. Actually, the way you could help Frank is this uh, Tango bag moved station. And as the International Space Station flies 260 miles over northern Kazakhstan, uh, the hatch is opened now to the Quest airlock. It looks like you're going to want your visor down. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, MPEV is closed and the hatch is open. And the emergency MPEV is closed. Okay, copy all team. Okay, so we're stepping into the post-depress 
Uh, so, Josh, Frank, you're going to stagger your switch throws, expect warning tones, uh, but your go for power to bat. And Nick, you were broken there. Uh, understand we are going power to bat and staggering our switch throws. That's a good readback. Stand by. Okay. Did you also have him broken, Frank? I did a little bit. Now he's good. Okay, I agree. Here comes my battery. I'll let you know. CB1 is in bat. Copy, Josh. CB2 is in bat. Copy, Frank. So now you'll switch display to pro to verify you've got a functional display. And unfortunately, I'm in the same boat. I have nothing on my display for EV1. Copy, Josh. You've got a uh, blank display. It is true. Me too. I have a good display. Copy, Frank. You've got a good display. Okay, Josh. Uh, we're going to get into the warm restart procedure. Okay, I copy that. I do have a warble tone. My pressure is showed 4.2. Copy, Josh. Good pressure. Okay, so we're going to do the warm restart for a comm failure, and I'm going to step you through the steps um, to get it reset. Uh, if you unexpectedly lose comm or encounter any issues, you can use the cuff checklist to complete the response. Okay, Nick, I, I'm on page uh, 28, uh, familiar from last time, and I just want to make sure that uh, this isn't user error since this is the second time in a row. I went to Pro, and I've got a blank screen. That's all you needed. Is that correct? Yeah, AFIRM, it's not you. Uh, it's expected. This happens quite frequently. Okay, Josh, you're, uh, I guess the first step, Frank, if you can take uh, EV1, power on the UIA to off OFF. Copy. And uh, when you when you do get that, uh, right, just let us know that the LED is off. Copy. Power EV1 is off OFF. EMU LED is off. Okay, and so Josh, you'll remember in this. Another verbal tone for EV1. I'm going to go ahead and pro. Copy, Josh. That's expected. So, on in this procedure, you'll remember, you know, we're going to turn the fan and the power, and that's going to go off for seven seconds. While the fan is off, you're going to be without cooling or CO2 removal, overheat, loss of visibility from fogging are possible. There'll be no calm until you take the power switch back to bat. If the fan operation is delayed or not restored, or power is not restored after switching back to bat, you can open and lock the helmet purge valve to restore some vent flow. I'll copy. Okay, I understand the steps are going to be power to bat, then fan is going to come off for seven seconds. I'm sorry, correction. We'll go fan off, power to SCU. Wait for seven seconds, and power will come to bat, and then fan will come on. If I start to fog up, I'm, I have the helmet perch valve available to me to open. Those are the steps, Josh. You've got it. Okay, with your go, I'll start with fan off, and then power it to you. This is Mission Control Houston. 
the uh, spacewalk underway officially with the uh, switch of the two crew members' suits to battery power at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Josh Cassida lost uh, the display on his uh, display and control monitor, uh, which shows him uh, basic uh, suit parameters. So he's in the process of restarting that. Uh, this is a common occurrence, no issue, no impact to the spacewalk. So we're underway, 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, good news. I've got a message that says H2O is off. And copy, Josh. That's good news. Nick, with your go, I'll go to Pro and give you a display check. Is that correct? And Josh, that's firm. Uh, go ahead and Pro check your display functionality. Okay, I see it. Uh, just a heads up, it came up really dim, and then after about a half second to a second, it came up to nominal brightness. And it says end status. I could scroll if you need, but good display. Okay, copy, Josh. It looks functional, so we're going to press. We're getting back into the post depress cue card, so. Frank, you're going to take uh, the UIA power for both EV1 and 2 to OFF and verify that the four LEDs go out. Once again, uh, the uh, spacewalk underway, the official start time at battery power on for the two spacewalkers, Cassid and Rubio, at 6.16 a.m. Central, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Cassida has restarted his display and control monitor, and now we will continue through the checklist of the post-depressurization activities that will set the stage for the two crew members to make their way outside of the crew lock section of Quest, begin to gather their tools, all of their other equipment, and make their way to the starboard four truss to begin work to install the ISS rollout solar array on uh, the starboard four truss on a mounting bracket uh, that uh, will augment the power capability for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. Okay, SCU is debated in the pouch and just fight it for EV1. And EV2, I am disconnected from the ACU. My DCM cover's on. I'm going to have to wait to stow it in the pouch until Josh is out. I can't reach it from my current position. And DCM cover is on for EV-1. And copy, Josh. You've got the DCM cover on. SEU is uh, demated and stowed in the pouch. And uh, copy the same for Frank. Uh, Frank is still in the pouch, but he should have time hold on. Yep. And uh, Nick, unfortunately, I can't get to the pouch from my current position. Once in the pouch. Yep, copy, Frank, and, and just want to let you guys know we've got just uh, some uh, blockage in our comms, so you're coming in broken. Understand, Frank, that you are uh, you can't get it in your pouch in the current position. Affirmative. Okay. 
And Frank, Josh, uh, back with you through the broken comms. It's going to be a, a little in and out for a second. Um, understand, Frank, the SU pouch, you're, we're going to go ahead and press. Uh, we can try to get it in later. So your go for step seven, depress pump, man iso valve closed. And, and gents, we're in a handover. Verify deep press pump man iso valve is closed. Copy, Frank. Um, deep press man iso valve is closed. Uh, so on your DCMs. Hey, Frank, yeah, Josh. He's breaking up at the end of his transmission. Yeah, Frank, Josh, how do you read me now? Got you. I have you same, Nick, I have you really strong when you start your transmission, and then the back part of your transmission is breaking off the previous uh, two or three transmissions. Yeah, copy, guys. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. We were going through a little bit of blockage there. We should be solid from this point forward. Um, copy that the man iso valve is closed. You're both go to take your TCV to max H. Water is currently off, go on to T, C, E, F, H. Either two. And copy, you guys, Max H, now you're good for your water switch to on, O, N. That's hot for EV1, and here comes water switch. On for EV1. On for EV2. Copy, check your DCM is blank and the byte is off, OFF. Affirmative for EV1. Affirmative for EV2. Okay, you're go to move your TCV uh, to your desired setting. Just let us know where you put it. EV1 copies. EV2 copies. So about 12 minutes now into uh, today's spacewalk, Cassett and Rubio are soon to emerge from the Quest airlocks crew lock section. All of uh, their suit parameters are looking good. Good suit data being received here on the ground, and uh, we now are locked up solidly on our tracking and data relay satellite system for communications. Okay, guys, so Josh, you're go to open the thermal cover. Uh, you want to stow the hook on the stiffener tether points, cinch the strap, and report the number of Sharpie lines. In work, 3D work. Next, this is EV2. My FCU is in the pouch. Okay, Vic, I've twisted. I've got uh, four Sharpie lines. If that's enough, I'm going to go ahead and open the thermal cover. Hey, Josh, if you can get it a little tighter, uh, we'd prefer six. Come back. Sharpie lights on the thermal cover. 
Good news. Yeah, so you're go to open the thermal cover. Okay, come on open. And for both of you, I wanted to let you know we're seeing good suit data here on the ground. Uh, only thing we want to confirm is your suit P gauge. P1 is showing 4.2. PV2, 4 decimal 3. Copy, guys. Thanks. And Josh, your go to egress. Copy that, Nick. Good. Go for the egress. Josh Cassido will be first out of the Quest airlock, then will be joined by Frank Rubio as they uh, gather all of their equipment uh, before making their way over to the starboard four truss. And Josh, as you're coming out, you're looking to throw down your anchor hook on the aft D-ring. Josh Cassida now outside of the uh, Quest airlock. He is EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one, wearing the suit uh, bearing the red stripes. Frank Rubio will wear the unmarked suit, both uh, crew members embarking on the second spacewalk of their careers. Black on black, moving over to port on 554 for Frank. Copy, Josh. Gate closed, sighter lock for your anchor. You'll just want to check your reels are unlocked at, at some point. We can get that in the buddy checks. You're looking to put Frank's anchor hook on that port stanchion of 554. Copy that. In work, and both reels are unlocked. Copy. Thanks. V2's anchor hook is gate closed, side lock, black on black, port, tether point there on the 554. Copy, Josh. That's a good config. So, Frank, you're go to release your waist tether, uh, and you'll want to check that your reels are unlocked. Okay, copy, Anwar. And EV2, um, we just saw that your SCU popped out of the uh, pouch. Okay, yeah, copy. Unfortunately, it was stuck between my legs, so I had to... Nick, do you want me to go ahead and turn on my HECA? That's your EV-1, sir. Josh, checking. And I'm ready for the Tango bag when you've got it there, Frank. Okay, A-1. 
And Josh, you've got to go to turn on your HECA. Understand HECA only right now for EV1. Hey, firm. Hi, Josh. I am reaching my right feather. Stop it. And the HECA is on for EV1. I've got a green light. Copy, Josh. Good green light on your HECA. All right, Josh, and here is the tango bag. All right. Give me one second, and I'll get a red on it. And I'm uh, stationed aft. If there's any way you can persuade it this way. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, just to recap, the uh, 256th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly maintenance and upgrades underway with the uh, battery power on call from Cassida and Rubio coming at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. The two crew members in the process of moving outside of the Quest airlock. Once outside, they will make their way to the uh, starboard four truss to begin setting up all of their equipment and begin the uh, work to uh, detach the next in the series of ISS rollout solar arrays or IROSAs from a uh, support uh, structure on the truss of the station and then manually move it over to the S4 truss to which it will be installed on a mounting bracket bolted into place, electrically connected, and unfurled to begin uh, the augmentation of power for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. This is, uh, again, the third in a series of six currently planned solar arrays, augmented ISS rollout solar arrays, to be installed on the station. Next step will be Frank coming out with the cable bag. One additional task on tap for the two spacewalkers, should time permit, will be the disconnection at the end of today's spacewalk of one of four electrical cables on the neighboring starboard six truss for the 1B power channel that incurred a power trip about a week and a half ago, taking down some of the functionality of that array and placing the 1B power channel out of commission for the moment those uh, loads being assumed by the 1A power channel for station systems without uh, any interruption to station operations or research. However, to regain about 75% of the functionality of the 1B power channel, the one power connector at the end of today's spacewalk will be disconnected and isolated. It'll be capped off, basically, to uh, isolate uh, the affected area of the solar array for the 1B channel on the starboard six truss. Electrical uh, systems officers will then uh, reactivate the 1B power channel. It uh, in of itself will receive an ISS rollout solar array next year on the next pair of arrays that will be delivered on a SpaceX uh, resupply mission. If time does not permit the two spacewalkers today to complete all of their work, then an additional spacewalk will be scheduled for this coming Wednesday, December 7th, to finish up either the deployment and activation of the ISS rollout solar array for the 3A power channel or the disconnection of that one electrical cable to bring the 1B power channel back online. Nick, as uh, Frank is getting set up there, I do see his WVF is on, and I do not believe mine is. I don't see the light. Okay, copy that, Josh. You can try to turn it on if you got a free hand. I do. I stand corrected. I got two green lights. 
Copy. Two green. That's good. Whether or not an additional spacewalk on December 7th is required, and again, we won't know that until we're done with the work today, Cassidy and Rubio will venture back outside on December 19th to replicate the work they're doing today, but this time on the other side of the backbone of the station, on the port fortress of the International Space Station, taking yet another ISS rollout solar array from a parking place on the truss of the station and installing it uh, on the 4A power channel, original solar array on the P4 truss. Okay, and I'm seeing a slight pull, but I'm not seeing anything when I spin to the right. Uh, with my left foot, interesting. I see no tethers. Yes, I see you completely clear. Okay. See water resistance. <laughs> Frank Rubio at the top of your screen, Josh Cassida on the bottom of your screen, still at the hatchway to the Quest airlock as uh, the two crew members check and double check to make sure they have all their equipment before making their way over to the work site on the starboard four truss. And your right one is done. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right, with that, Nick, we've got everything except for a hap check. So uh, my hap is dry for EV-1. And my hap is also dry for EV-2. Copy, guys. Good buddy checks. Um, you're go to close the thermal cover. Okay. Get your uh, safety colors there. And work, and I'll clear those out. Okay, and um, push. Yeah. Thanks. The uh, HAP that you heard uh, referred to by spacecraft communicator Nick Haig is the helmet absorption pad, uh, making sure periodically throughout the spacewalk that there is no accumulation of uh, condensation in the helmet. Everything looks good. The crew uh, will now uh, begin to translate or make their way over to the work site on the starboard four truss. Otherwise, uh, all looking good on your tethers. I see uh, good checks. Copy that. Hey, guys. Okay, so what do you think? you're good. Uh, Frank, you're going to lead out, uh, translate to the green hook location. Uh, just remind you to put in a fair lead uh, on handrail 500 and a uh, fair lead at the sea to spur. Okay, I copy that. Pick that up my local and starting out. Hi, right, Josh. We'll see you up there. Sounds great. And guys, as you're translating now, just want to let you know that was an on-time departure. Well done. All right. Great job by the, uh, the IVs. Yep, both on the team down on the ground and the one up here. Absolutely crushed it. Thank you, everybody. And I got a fairly on 500. Wonderful. Can you give me a push on my bag there? Yeah, for oh, sure. Why this for sure. The T refuses to. Yeah, sometimes the BRT seems like more like a suggestion, doesn't yeah. it? All right, that's good. You okay? Thank you. You got it. Getting up the Cedar Spur? Copy. Copy, Frank. You're going up the Cedar Spur. Uh, for both of you, just a caution to avoid contact with the Tusk cable. Thanks, Nick. I think I'm at the top of the Cetus Spur. I have a good, uh, you know, Copy, Frank. 
for that, Frank. Come in. Hey, Starboard. Copy. Copy, Frank. You're heading starboard. As you go out there, the handrail you're going to be looking for your green hook is 3215, Two, one, five, thirty two, fifteen. Okay, EV one is at the Rail heading starboard. I'm at the port feeder port. Okay. And Nick, understand mile marker 6300 is not a bad mark for me, is that right? And we're checking. That's okay. There's sixty three hundred. And 6300 should be uh, just above those handrails that are down on the uh, Nader side. Agreed. Thank you. And Josh, your green hook, I didn't give you your handrail yet, but you know it's 3247. 3247, great, that's where I am, appreciate it. And making sure I stay. Enough. Franks. Agree with that, Nick. Keep my safety tethers in the Frank. Yep, copy, Josh. And Nick, I am at the uh, end of S1. And can you say again the hand rabbit I'm looking for? Yeah, it's three two one five thirty two fifteen. Zero one green hook is down on a zenith end of thirty two forty seven. Nick, I am under the uh, starboard cedar cart, and I see. Three three zero six one three zero six seven. Can you vector me from here? I thought it was and, supposed to be kind of a diagonal Frank, handrail. Yeah, Frank, if you uh if you look at the the outboard edge of the CETA cart, your handrail is gonna be Zenith, uh kind of below mile marker five eight two zero. Copy. 
ones continuing on starboard a little bit. Frank, I will be nowhere near you when I cross the U.S. drill. And Nick, uh, I think I am at the end of my safety tether here. Yeah, because of the Frank, uh, copy. Fairies. Yeah, Frank, copy. So you're a little too far outboard. So the port seat of cart is what your target is. You're going to be on the, the starboard side of that port seat of cart, so you'll have to go back under the MT. Um, when you get to that port seat of cart, uh, your handrail is going to just be below mile marker 5820. Okay. Josh, sorry about that. Jeez, no problems, Frank. I don't know why I'm dog. I could have sworn it was uh, underneath the starboard seat of it. No problem at all. Nick, I am on the meter stanchion of 3217. And copy, Frank, can you say that again? I am on the meter stanchion of 3217. Uh, Green Hook is uh, dropped on the meter stanchion. Yeah, copy that, Frank. Uh, we, 3215 is a little bit more nadir of that. It's the long handrail below it. Okay, copy. And while, while you guys are working into position, I'm going to read a couple of warnings and cautions real quick. So, warning to uh, avoid the grapple shafts and cervic teeth, um, they're no touch, and then caution for no aggressive movements on the FSC, so less than uh, four inches per second translation speed. Wait until any kind of motion dampens out before imparting loads, and you shouldn't impart loads simultaneously, uh, and do not contact the IROSA blankets or solar cell cells, they're fragile. EV1 copies. EV2 copies. EV1 is over Benson Delta. And copy, Josh. You're translating toward the FSC tower handrail to stow the bag. 38 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk, Cassidy and Rubio making their way towards uh, the ISS rollout solar array that is temporarily parked on a payload attachment device on the truss of the International Space Station. Rubio will be using a pistol grip tool to uh, unbolt the first of uh, a number of bolts that are available uh, holding uh, the IROSA in place. The release of uh, the first of these bolts plus the release of what are called anti-rotation devices that were designed uh, to minimize uh, the loads on the solar arrays in the trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon carrier craft, the resupply vehicle, that delivered uh, this uh, IROSA and a second IROSA to be installed on December 19th on the Port Fortress solar array of the International Space Station. These anti-rotation devices will be released, all part of the initial work to remove uh, the IROSA from its uh, support structure, its parking place on the truss of the station, prior to the time that Josh Cassida will then manually ride at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm to move the IROSA over to the starboard fortress worksite where it is to be installed on a mounting bracket for its installation and deployment. Uh, 
fine. Thanks, so, uh, my headset should be on now. Uh, hit the uh, WBS button. Uh, power cycle to twice, and I did not see a green LED. Okay, copy, Frank. Uh, HECA should be on now. We'll check it out, and you power cycle WVS. Uh, there's no green light for WVS. I see a green light for HECA. Okay, copy, green light for HECA, and we're seeing WVS. Uh, can I continue to the top receipt, Peter Clark? Hey, firm. Uh, you're going to stow that cable bag on the uh, square grid alpha uh, using two hooks to secure the bag. While uh, Cassidy and Rubio are getting uh, situated, uh, making their way towards uh, the IROSA that will be removed from uh, its uh, payload attachment device parking place on the truss of the station, Koichi Wakata and uh, Nicole Mann are at the uh, Destiny Laboratory robotic workstation as they uh, begin to set up shop there. Wakata will be the uh, arm operator driving Josh Cassidy uh, with the IROSA to the Starboard 4 worksite for its ultimate installation. Right, next bag is in a good spot there on the tower. I'm going to get my uh, net off. We've got integral to forward expansion on the tower, and then uh, that, I'm sorry, the adjustable to zero eight, and that would be Zenith. Yeah, we see it, and that's a great config, Josh. Uh, we'll take a glove and half check. Sounds good. Let me put away my VRT, and then we'll do it. Taking a look at my gloves. See no changes, but I'll hold them up to the HECA. And Josh, we don't need the views. Okay. All right, uh, and the half is dry. So with that, I am ready for settings for R5. Okay, copy that, Josh. Good gloves, good half. Your settings for the R5 bolt are going to be Bravo 2, counter clockwise 2. All right, Bravo 2, counter clockwise 2 for R5. 
That's a good read back. Frank, where, where are you these days? I am over on the Melbourne Pseudocar dropping off the uh, data. Awesome. And Frank, once you get that uh, cable bag uh, tied down on the starboard seat of carts, you're going to retrieve crew lock bag M plus that large small ret and stow it on your BRT. Okay, that is our work. Forty-six minutes into uh, the spacewalk, Rubio and Cassida, soon to begin uh, the first in a series of uh, ongoing bolt-turning procedures, first uh, to release uh, the first of a series of bolts called R5 on the lower portion of the ISS rollout solar array that you see uh, at the top of your screen. It is mounted on a uh, attachment structure on the truss of the International Space Station after having been delivered to the station last Sunday on the SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply flight to the International Outpost. The uh, crew will also release uh, the top portion of uh, what are called anti-rotation devices. These are basically uh, bolts uh, that uh, prevented any uh, inadvertent movement of the IROSAs while they sat uh, in the trunk of Cargo Dragon during its launch from the Kennedy Space Center. Bag Mike with that large swallow rest and you're heading over to the mod kit now. You'll want to check that your gauntlets are in place. Bravo 2, corner clockwise 2 is set, and uh, we had a good catch. Okay, Josh, those are good uh, settings. Uh, so you're going to release R5, expecting 18 to 20 turns. That bolt's going to spring out when released, and there should be a, a white line. I'll be looking for the white line. Thanks for the reminder. 18 to 20 turns. Starting turn. And the crew uh, beginning uh, the procedures and the uh, release of the first of a number of bolts. There are some three dozen bolts in all at a variety of areas along the uh, ISS rollout solar array that must be released. Both uh, on the uh, flight support equipment uh, parking place on the truss of the station on the IROSA itself and then ultimately to bolt uh, the IROSA in place on its modification kit or bracket to which it will be affixed on the starboard four truss of the station. Yeah, there's 18 and no white line yet. Well, it is popped out. Is there a chance this white line is fairly subtle and hard to see from, uh, from my vantage point? Okay, Josh, copy. You got 18 turns and that popped out. I'm negative. I got a total of 20 now. I did two additional, and I can see, and you can probably see my camera here. It is popped out, and I just a little hard with the sun here to see if there's a white line. Josh, 
Yes, I'm good. You have a good video on that? And, and negative, we don't have KU right now. Oh, fine. But Josh, the, you've got the number of turns, and if it popped out, we're good to press. Okay. I think the right line is pretty subtle. I see it at the base, I believe. It's slightly different than the, uh, the shaft of the, uh, of the bolt. Copy, Josh. We're good to press. Everybody's happy. Copy. All right, Nick, I am at the pocket, and I have the large, small ruts to the left, uh, the left mid strut hand rail, and then I have the integral to the left lower strut, lower stanchion hand rail, or general uh, lower stanchion. Yeah, copy that, uh, Frank, and we'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check. And guys, while I've got a second, I'm going to give you some cautions for the mod kit. No sudden movements on the mass canister or mod kit, less than four inches a second on the BGA uh, to translate slow. Avoid cyclic loading and uh, be mindful that the IEA uh, battery AP cables are a snag hazard. Okay, copy that. Thanks. Give you two copies. I understand I'm uh, going back to the Cedar cart. Is that correct? That's a firm, Josh. Uh, when you're ready, you're going to move to the port Cedar cart with three. Port Cedar cart with three. While I'm out here, the pocket um, looks good. We have uh, three soft captures in the right position and uh, no fraud on the platform. That's awesome. Thanks. Appreciate the, the check. Um, next uh, step is going to be translating back to the FSC. Okay. Good work. Flying from southwest to northeast across the Pacific, soon to cross uh, the west coast of South America. The International Space Station flies smoothly on 53 minutes into today's spacewalk by Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, running about 15 minutes ahead of the timeline so far, having begun the spacewalk at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. All right, Frank, I'm at the Fort Cedar cart. I can imagine a little bit of a traffic jam here. Right. see you. Um, are you about to head back in Tencent? I'm getting an APFR in them, though. Okay. Nick, I'm uh, currently showing pop-up, pop-up. 
and looks like it must be Fox 6 already, so it's just the clock and it will have to change. Yeah, your current uh, setting, Papa Papa Foxtrot 6, is what you're going to install. Uh, when you do the install, it's clocking 12. If I had Zenith here, my uh, safety tether will go up and up. You guys want me to wait here, or is that okay? Hey, Frank, uh, understand, and we've got a good view of uh, kind of the bottleneck that we've got going on. Big picture for you guys, uh, we're over seven hours on consumables. We're up 15 minutes on the timeline. You guys are going great. So, Frank, if you just want to hold position while while Josh works this, and, and then we'll let you pass through. Okay, sounds great. While you're hanging out there, uh, if you want to give us a glove and half check, that'd be great. Apologies, uh, how would you want to? All right, so. Get my uh, gloves. have a couple of tiny uh, nicks on the rubber part, but absolutely uh, superficial, otherwise baseline, and uh, dry hat. Good rep to the APSR and good on my VRT. And copy, Frank. Uh, understand. Good glove and half. White on black and removing. Your far is uninstalled. Since you're there, you can probably see, I'm going to try to stick this out the side. It's probably the best way to translate, if you agree. It's going to clear stuff. Yep. Uh, it's going to hit the uh, brake lever, but I think it'll say, no, it'll, it'll bump into the brake lever, basically. Got it. Thank you. Uh, need a little bit more inboard just to keep it from catching. There you go. You're good. Okay, continue inboard as much as you can. And click you are clear of the brake handle. Awesome, thank you. Yep. That was super helpful. All right, that is your departure point for uh, any of the FSC, so I'm out of your way now. Okay, awesome, thank you. And Josh, as you uh, head inboard toward FHRC, you're looking for mile marker 6300, 6300. One's my favorite. Thanks, Nick. And Frank, you're going to translate up to the uh, tower handrail. Uh, you're going to go stanchions, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie to the tower. Okay, I copy. Thank you. Okay, I'm looking for a robotic arm around here. That's the one. All right, Frank, you need comp. Negative, thank you. M1, M2. 
All on three, on one. Hello, EV1. We have a GCA to published APFR install position on your go. Okay, EV1 is ready GCA to the APFR install position. With the uh, first of the uh, numerous bolts having been released by uh, the crew.